progress. Before we start, may I please remind everyone to change your names into the required format. That is your LGU name underscore your full name. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of the CDD technical team so we may be able to assist you. Thank you.
A beautiful Friday to our beautiful moms and sisters. This is Kyla Kyonko from the Capacity Development Division, and I will be your facilitator for this entire virtual learning session. Before we start, may I ask our Zoom participants to please give us a quick thumbs up just to be certain that you can hear us crystal clear. Thank you very much for your responses. To start, let us begin with an opening prayer. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you at this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to the best that we can be. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, this is your facilitator, Krista Kailat Yonko, and welcome to the last day of the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on RA number 9184 and its 2016 revised IRR, brought to you by none other than the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. But before we go straight ahead to our lecture, let us do a quick game. So our game for today is guess that phrase. Our rules are simple. Our technical team shall be sharing a video and all you have to do is to guess the phrase and comment it in the Zoom chat box. In addition, our Facebook Live participants can also join by commenting your answers in the comment section. The first one to guess the correct answer shall be our winner. Are you ready? Kindly flash the first video, please. Okay. Alam po ba ninyo kung ano po yung line na sinabi ni Carlo Aquino dito sa movie na ito? Ayun ang bilis from LGU Arena, Mr. Samson Villarosa. Akala mo lang wala, pero meron, meron, meron. Tama po ba yung ating sagot? Akala mo lang wala, pero meron, meron, meron! Pa. <laughs> so yun, tama po ang sagot ni Sir. Akala mo lang wala, pero meron, meron, meron. From Bata Bata Pano Ka Ginawa, 1998. For our next Sound, please. Okay, ang bilis ulit. Meron na pong nakasagot. My mother is not a pig. Tama po ba yung sagot? My brother is not a pig. My brother is not a pig. So, sino po yung una nakasagot ng my brother is not a pig? From LGU Barcelona, Sir Sagon. Ano po yung pangalan ni Ma? Uh, sir, si Sir Hener Lagata, siya po yung unang nakasagot. And for our last video...
Alam po ba ninyon? Wow. So, may, ang unang nakasagot is from LGU Libon, Miss Yvonne Olet. You're just a second rate trying hard copycat. Tama po ba yung sagot ni ma'am? You're nothing but a second rate trying hard copycat. Ayun. You're nothing but a second rate trying hard copycat. May nakasakto po ba sa ating phrase? So far po, walang nakasakto sa ating phrase, pero okay lang po yun. Thank you so much for our participants for joining our game. So ayan, I think we're all ready to dive in our lecture proper for today. So at this juncture, we are now at the last day of our training session. Thank God it's Friday, ika nga. So we would like to extend our gratitude to all our participants for staying with us until this point. Before we dive into the actual lecture proper, allow me to announce the Early Bird Award is for today. Congratulations to our Early Bird winners from LGU Delphine Albano Isabella, Mr. Romel Salvador. And from LGU, LGU Santa Cruz Laguna, Miss Maria Lourdes P. San Miguel. Congratulations again, Ma'am and Sir. Our event secretariat shall coordinate with you on how you may claim your special token within the course of our program. Also, just a quick reminder to our Zoom participants, please don't forget to register your attendance through the Google form link to be provided by our event secretariat through the Zoom chat box. Okay. Also, just a quick recap of yesterday's learning activity. We had a very productive session on alternative methods of procurement, where we discussed the different alternative methods as applicable to the municipalities and what is required for the specific modes of procurement. This is led, of course, by a resource speaker, Mr. Reynaldo Villon. And for our fifth and final day, um, I would like to remind all our participants, if you haven't done yet, please register through the GPT BTSO online training management system using the control number provided by our event secretariat. Also, for, our, uh, for this session, we will be having two full sessions on protest mechanism and remedies and on blacklisting guidelines, respectively. I hope you are all excited to learn from our distinguished resource speaker. So with that, it is with joy to introduce to you this session's resource speaker. Our resource speaker graduated with a Bachelor of Laws degree, which is changed to a Jewish doctor from the University of Southern Philippines Foundation, as well as a Master's in Public Policy from the Graduate School of Governance Studies of Meiji University as a JICA JICE scholar under the Japanese Grant Aid for Human Resource Development Scholarship Fellowship Program. Joining us today, the attorney for of the Department of the Interior and Local Government Regional Office 7 and a GPPB recognized trainer, please welcome Attorney Isa Fiel A. Nogra. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm glad we're able to wake up on time and hopefully you will find this session productive. This would be your last already. So it pays also to visit some of the provisions of the law when it comes to penalty. I know this is this are there are parts of the discussion here which will make uh, some of us, especially those who are currently facing some legal um, consequences of their being a member of the back, it will make them uncomfortable. But also, this is a learning opportunity for all of us, uh, not only on the things that we should do if we are members of the back or if we are hope, but also the things that we should try to avoid, even if we see others doing as much as possible. So I hope you will listen to my discussion. There will be knowledge check later. And I have high expectations because the past... <laughs> 
because the past batches also are. And so just listen to my discussion, okay? And I will be very happy if you can answer those knowledge checks because it will validate also that my discussion was well understood. So, uh, okay. I'll, I'll just clap for myself every time I say that. Because, you know, one of the things, the good things about lecturing or discussing is the eye-to-eye -eye contact and seeing that some of your participants actually understood what you're trying to say. But in Zoom, it's not, of course, it's not possible. So sometimes the motivation is not there. You could, you could see me, but you could not directly look at me. And for some people, that's a problem in the learning process. And same as well to the lecturers. It's the same with us. It's also a problem for us when it comes to communication. But we have, for, we have to, of course, adopt with a situation and I'm glad that you registered to this activity. So today is your last day. I'm sure you have already learned a lot of things along the way. So some of the things that I will discuss will remind you also of the things that you should observe uh, during the bidding procedure. So some of you here are new, some of you here are, have been already in the bidding environment uh, for quite some time. And this is an opportunity to learn new things, not only from your mentors, but from the actual uh, policy makers, such as the GPPB. So hope you will listen. <laughs> okay, so we will start with the protest mechanism and remedies. And then later on, we will proceed with the blacklisting guidelines. Um, previously, as far as I know, when we started this thing in 2012, it's still uh they're lumped together blacklisting guidelines is actually part of the discussion about this mechanism and remedies because you will hear me talking about blacklisting during the first topic also but uh because of some developments uh especially in establishing the uniform guidelines and also with the online blacklisting portal uh it automatically follows that it requires a separate module no so i will try to speak in english and also in Tagalog, although it's difficult for me because I lack vocabulary in Tagalog because this is nationwide. And although I've seen some participants from Region 7, Central Visayas, where I came, where I come from, I'm from the ALG Region 7, I'm glad you could join. So for protest mechanism and remedies, we have the module objectives. We will start with a expectation setting. So when you say expectation, what do you expect to learn from this module? So in the ILG, we usually start also our activities with these, not only seminars, but even workshops and other activities. What do you expect to gain from this activity? It's part of the uh, whole process of, uh, of, over, of finding what is the purpose of coming here, what we will get from out of this time that we spend here. We will spend four hours together, okay? We'll spend for us sitting here and looking at each other on the black screen, either on our laptop or cell phone. So by the end of this module, participants, you, oh, sorry for the unstable internet, okay. By the end of this module, the participants uh, should be able to first, of course, know the grounds and remedies of offenses committed in relation to the conduct and or participation to procurement activities. So these are the things that the law is telling you not to do. Okay, not only RA nine one eight four, but even other applicable laws, no criminal and administrative laws. So, know the grounds and remedies of offenses committed in relation to the conduct and our participation to procurement activities. Then understand the procedures and considerations of how to resolve a request for reconsideration on and or protest. So these are also the things that you should do. So the first refers to the things, the grounds and remedies that you should avoid doing. And the second, the procedures, what you should do if it, in case it happens, that there are questions on your discretions as back members or as whole through a uh, request for consideration and or protest. So you should um, take note of this thing. So while previous discussions tells you what to do during bidding, now we will tell you what not to do, not only during bidding, but throughout the whole process, procurement process, because of course we know that procurement is not only about bidding, but all other processes that involves with it, because not all the time there's bidding, right? There are alternative modes, and even we even have pre-procurement to determine what is the mode 
a procurement that we will take. So even during these times, during planning, there are already actions that you should try to uh, avoid, uh, no? to avoid any liability. Because of course, freedom is precious and reputation is very important. I didn't know to some, but I know that most of us, we are, especially us, um, regular career officials, we have families that we who we value, we have names whom we value, we live simple lives and we don't want anything that we do because of our duty as a back member will have a um, long, long lasting impact uh, in our future, no? In our names. So the outline of this discuss this discussion, of course, we'll start with the panel, seven administrative provisions, as well as liabilities under Republic Act P019 or the Anti-Graft and Career Practices Act. So these are the things that you should not do, no? So this uh, covers the first expectation setting that we expect from you. So the third and fourth would be, of course, the Brattles Mechanism and the Blacklisting Guidance. Blacklisting Guidance, as I've said earlier, it will be discussed separately, but of course, we will discuss this continuously now. So request, protest mechanisms include, of course, the protest for filing a request, a motion for consideration, and the valid protest and resolutions. So the first one, the request is for filing of request, uh, of request or motion for consideration and valid protest is for any of the bidders or contractors who are interested to file one. But you, for the procedures and the resolution of protest, shall refer to the actions that should be observed by the back members as well as the hope because request for considerations belong to the back and protest belongs to the hopes and um, responsibility. So next slide, we'll start already. So the penal civil administrative provisions, it is very important for us to discuss it three together because it is uh, basic that sometimes in our, through the, in, in the occasion of uh, our function, not in the occasion of doing our duties, sometimes our act will give rise to three liabilities. We call that a uh, threefold liability. Uh, one act could give rise to an administrative, penal, and civil repercussions or liabilities. So, um, sabi minsan natin, isa lang yung nagawa ko, ang dami ko namang kaso. Ay, oo. May kaso ka pa sa RA9184, may kaso ka pa sa RA3019, tapos may kulong pa, may administrative pa, etc. Of course, later I will discuss uh, extensively. Yun nga, maisip mo, isa lang ginawa ko. So, one act to give rise to three liabilities, the penal, civil, and administrative provisions. Now, next slide. Why is it there's so many consequences, no? For a... Uh, just a simple act or simple mistake or what you th you think that what is a simple mistake lang because of course we are public officers na and of and we have to remember that public officer a public office is a public trust and there's a high standard of ethics required for us from us no the standard of ethics required to be observed also not only by the procuring entity and us the uh, part as part of the procuring entity but also with the bidders, manufacturers, suppliers, or distributors during the procurement and execution of contract because they deal with us. They deal with the government. And when they deal with the government and we, they deal with the government agencies, they also deal with public funds. So it is not our money. If it is our money and we have problems with the budgeting, we failed, as a, we failed in our budget, it's no problem. It's just us who will suffer with the deficit in our monthly or quarterly budget but if it's government money it is considered as lost uh it's a loss for the government and it's a betrayal it can even be considered a betrayal of the government of the people's uh, public interesting to us the governance no and their pub and their money so we have a high standard of ethics that is uh being observed uh, in fact we have ra6713 your uh code of conduct which is to be observed always so ayo wag kayong maging kampante no na isang batas lang yung pwedeng bantay na dapat nabantayan nyo uh, um, 
it includes a lot of laws. There's a harmonization of all laws here. Isang act mo, marami ang laws na pwedeng tamaan. It, and it will all be uh, observed and could be used against you. So dapat maingat tayo, no? So next slide. So when we discuss about prohibited practices or the uh, acts uh, that we should avoid or we should not be doing, no, we will, there's a lot of acts that we're that you are not supposed to do or you are supposed to observe, no? But we will categorize this into four practices just to be easy for you to remember, no? Kasi minsan hindi natin mamemorize lahat yan. Daming pwedeng gawin. And, you know, one thing I noticed in the Philippines, <laughs> no? uh, people who want to do, uh, people who want to do things that are unlawful can be very initiative, no? Masyado silang maraming initiative. Ang gagaling nilang mag-isip, ang sabi nga, ang tataba daw ng utak, maghanap anong pwedeng gawin. So, sometimes, the things that they do, the things that would reach the courts or the things that would reach this uh, forums exercising quasi-judicial function could be, could not even be defined by the book. You could not find it anywhere, but it belongs to these practices. So, you just have to rem remember these practices. So, it could be collusive, Meaning, may mga um, sabuatan, may mga, mga arrangement sila, no? So, yeah. Pag uh, merong tawag doon, sabuatan, arrangement, yes. That is collusive. May scheme or arrangement between two or more bidders to establish the process at, art, uh, to establish the prices at artificial levels. So, yan. May mga nangyayari sa likod nyo. Kaya yun ba, you have to be very observant with how the bidders interact with each other. Of course, it's not, unus it's, not un it's not unusual that they are friends, especially if they come from the same industry. You will see that they will see each other. They meet each other every time in different agencies because they usually bid on different on same things. But uh, during bidding process, you should... Be a more observant if there is a, a uh, any collusion that is happening behind you, and if meron ba sila mga kaduda dudang pinagagawa. So of course later, no, it's I think it's also experience. It's experience speaks on this matter. Uh, the longer you are as members of the back or in the back in the bidding environment, the more you are sharper. Uh, the sharper you get, no, in looking at these things. So another would be corrupt practices. So sa atin madaling sabihin, ano may yung corrupt ay uh, yung pangamkam, pagnanakaw. So improper, yun yung po yung improper and unlawful enrichment of oneself of others. Pag naka-benefit ka, may presumption that it is uh uh it's a benefit gained from a corrupt practice, no? Especially sa atin sa mga government officials because they expect us to be really poor. It's not that we are poor kasi hindi ba tayo pwedeng mag-business? No? Hindi ba tayo pwedeng raw market, mag-freelance? Of course, especially if you're a professional and you're allowed to exercise your profession by your direct supervisor, you could gain money, other monetary benefits also from that. But, uh, minsan nakikita kasi hindi yung lifestyle natin hindi na siya commensurate with our income or even our, even our declared uh, financial interest. So, pwede tayong madudahan na may mga corrupt practices tayo and if it involves, and, they, and if these corrupt practices that were to be found out will in, be involved, will involve procurement um, violations, then of course, may kaso tayong haharapin, no? So, another would be coercive practice. Coercive, parang sasabi natin siya pamimilit or pananakot. So, there's a harm or threat to harm directly or indirectly. Pwedeng against us, pwedeng against other bidders, pwedeng against any member of the of the office, pwedeng ibang threat. Uh, 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 kayo, or even your families, no? So, Especially, may mga, yung mga big talaga na, na 
amounts involved. So right now, you will say, ah, maliliit lang naman yung mga procurements namin. We're just MLGUs. Na remember, by next year, lalaki na po yung NPA natin, no? National Tax Allocation natin because of Mandana's ruling. We will be expecting more projects from you, especially uh, isang, mga infra, mga capital outlay, and there will be more services that will be provided by the LGUs. So there will be more procurement also. Some of the procurements that are usually done by national government agencies will be taken over by the LGUs na. So since marami kayong projects, marami nang para kayong nag Alam mo yung bulaklak na namumukadkad, maraming mga butterflies. So let's take it as you being the bulaklak and the butterflies are the bidders or suppliers. There are a lot of people who will be interested to gain financially from you. So in a way, it will put you also not only as an attractive source of income for them, but it will also put you in a direct, you know, in the direct line of harm or threats or blackmail, and you have to be wary of that, no? Yeah, dapat mapapansin nyo kung yung mga iba, mga pasimple, no? Pasimple yung pananakop, naku, paano yan? Baka hindi ko ma-approve yung negosyo ng anak mo. That's already pananakot, okay? So, minsan yung iba, pasimple, si boss, pasimple yung nagsasabi para paboran yung paborito niya, or kaya yung yung boss ni boss, si boss sana mabait, kaso parang may nakikialam sa taas. No? So, tingnan natin yun. Dapat we are very conscious kung may pananakot ba to, may pambablackmail ba to, oh, di ba? Yun yung papansinin natin. Huwag sasabihin nga, hindi, hindi naman. Don't deny if it's happening. So, another would be, of course, fraudulent practice. So, misrepresentation. May minimisrepresent kayo of facts in order to influence a procurement process. So, yung fraudulent natin, not only pagkukunwari, or pagsisinungaling, pati na din po yung hindi pagsasabi ng totoo. Kasi some of us actually believe that it's not pagsisinungaling pag hindi mo lang sinabi kasi hindi naman tinatanong. There are there are um, required disclosures no? under RA9184 and even uh, and even in the anti-graft and corrupt practices law or even in the code of conduct, there are required disclosures from us, the government employees, and even those who deal with us, the government, as members of the government entity. So not only ka, not only yung pagsisinungaling or misrepresentation of facts, but also yung hindi, yung omission, yung hindi pagsasabi ng totoo, hindi pagdi-disclose ng facts. Kasama po yun sa fraudulent act. So we will summarize the prohibited practices, collusive, yung pagkikipagsabuatan, corrupt, yung pangangamkam, unlawful benefit, coercive, yung pananakot po, at saka fraudulent practices, the misrepresentation of facts or omission. So yun po yung titingnan natin ng mga practices na pinagbabawal under RA 9184 and other laws. So ano, ano, ano yung mga... Ah, uh, ito, may knowledge check pa. So later, I will discuss one by one different uh, offenses that could be committed that could belong to this kind of practices, no? So take a uh, note. So before we proceed, we have this knowledge check. Uh, it's prepared by the GPPB just to see if uh, baka may natutulog sa atin. <laughs> so, yeah. My price is yes. yet. <laughs> Actually, ma'am, uh, that will be... Um, in our pipeline. Pero hindi pa po ito yung my price. Um, ito pa lang po is to check kung nakikinig po ba yung ating mga participants sa ating discussion. So for our first knowledge check, all we have to do is choose the appropriate answer in the pop-up poll that shall be flashed in our screens. So the question is, all are covered by penal provisions are under RA 9184 except one. A. Misrepresentation. B. Collusion. C. Connivance. Or D. Malicious mischief. For our Facebook Live viewers, again, you may also participate by dropping your answers in the comments section.
In addition po, no, I have also noticed that some of our participants are experiencing technical difficult situation and also please bear with us as we are experiencing more technical challenges in our virtual sessions era. Rest assured that we are exhausting all means necessary to reach out to you and to provide you with an in-depth set of sessions, but with a smooth sailing program as well, because we really hashtag make things happen. All right, ma'am, I think we have the majority of our participants who answered our poll question. So 87% of our participants answered letter D, malicious mischief. Is this the correct answer, ma'am? Yes, this is correct, actually. Misrepresentation, as I mentioned earlier, is yung examples of fraudulent practices. Misrepresentation of fact and collusion and connivance are all the same. They are included in the collusive practices. So malicious mischief is, punish is punishable under the revised penal code. And it's actually one of those crimes against properties, no? So marami siyang involved, mga, min ano, mga minor lang. Pero hindi siya definitely sa procurement na offense. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that explanation, and let us now proceed to our lecture proper. Yes, so we will proceed with the penal provisions, no? Uh, it's one thing about being online, no? Parang, yun lang siya, parang makasali kayo sa karamihan na tama, masaya sa feeling. Pero, of course, when it's an actual seminar, masaya din yung competitive pag lumalabas yung pagiging competitive natin na nasasagot natin dyan. Pero marami din kopyahan pag actual time na sa seminar, lalo na yung katabi natin, no? So, yun din. So, for the next would be, we will proceed with the penal provision. So, as I discussed earlier in the outline, we will start with the penal, civil, and administrative um, administrative provisions under RA9184 before we proceed with the provisions under RA3019. So with the penal provisions, we will uh, we will start with the coverage. So sino ba ang pwedeng ma-penalize ma under RA9184 for penal offense? So it includes the public officers and the private individuals. So, sino-sino public officers? Tayo lang ba? Ay, ayoko nang mag-back kasi kami lang ang mananago. No. Public officers who commit any of the acts enumerated under Section 65.1 of the IRR, if you have a copy of that, you can check, are included. And when you say public officers who commit any of these acts, hindi lang po tayo ang andyan, yung mga back members. Kasama na po yung ibang public officers who are also get themselves also involved no, with the procurement process. So, pag pumapasok sila, uh, sa Bisaya, meron kami dyan eh. Kanong na-inter. So, I don't know if, uh, what's the similar, ano, pag, bakit kasi nakikialam, sumasali. So, yan. So, public officers who commit any of the acts violative of the uh, provisions under our Indian 184 and IRR. So, yeah, although some of us, we don't really have a choice but being about uh, be, uh, but being part of the back because we are appointed as such. So we have to be careful of our acts because we are public officers. No? Then another would be the private individuals. Natin, oh, sa madali sa inyong itakutin kami kasi wala kayo sa pag after nyong maka-benefit, nakagain kayo ng profit, wala lang sa inyo kasi kami naiiwan dito sa position, kami yung mananagot. Actually, mananagot din po sila. So, any private individuals who commit any of the following acts, then later I discussed the enumerated under Section 65.2 and 65.3 of the law. And these acts, no? And these offenses are without prejudice, this liability without prejudice to the provisions of Republic Act number 3019, also known as the anti graft and Purposes Law Act and other penal laws. So, even if uh, not, not charged ka na uh, for penal offense under RA 9184, it doesn't mean na preclude na hindi na ka na pwedeng ma-charge under other laws. So, pwede yan, uh, charge ka din ng other laws. So, so yan, we go to the highest penalty, of course, no? 
Oh. So, minsan makalusot ka under RA 9184 kasi hindi na-observe yung process. Meron tayong kasi later ma-discuss exhaustion of administrative remedies pero hindi ka makalusot sa RA 8019. Kaya ingat-ingat pa din po tayo, no? Kasi maraming law na pwedeng tamaan. Hindi ka man madimanda sa isa kasi nag-prescribe, madidimanda ka sa iba. So, kaya ingat. So, coverage ng penal clause natin, the penalties and offenses. Next slide po. Under RA 9184, it's IRR shall cover all types of procurement, whether done manually or electronically. Not only done manually or electronically, kahit alternative mode pa yan, basta procurement yan. Not only lang po tayo may penal clause pag may bidding. Baka isipin natin may danger lang pag may bidding. Ah, sabi naman, alternative mode na tayo, mas mabilis lang, walang masyadong light. Wala, hindi tayo makukulong. Kahit po alternative mode yung ginagamit nyo, negotiated, and even, even the simple, ang mga yung mga simple lang, no? Na, kahit pa siguro, ano lang, na repeat order yan. Pag may violations kayo na makikita, pwede pa rin po kayong maging liable. Kasama po sa coverage of penal clause. So, wag masyadong kampante. No? Hindi kailangan ng bidding para pwede tayong magkamali. So, whether done manually or electronically at all types of procurement, yes, it is covered by RA 9184's penal clause. No, upper. Tapos meron din po tayo, um, so not only yung coverage ng penal clause natin na tao, juridika, uh, natural person, tayo as sole entrepreneur, as back members, as HOPE, as TWG, even juridical entities some um, like for example those who uh, who obtain their personality not through natural birth but through laws such as the article you know sa corporation code tapos yung mga sole entrepreneurs then mga partners din sa partnership mga joint venture they are also have a certain liability so especially yung mga uh, directors officers employees who actually commit the, the foregoing acts no So if ikaw, ta, na, you are a natural person and you have a... Titingnan po niyo yan during sa eligibility check. Uh, is this person who represents himself as a sole entrepreneur, does he have any controlling interest uh, in, a, in a blacklisted corporation or in a blacklisted uh, enterprise before? So titingnan niyo po yan. Pag may interest siya doon at least 20% and he's the one Uh, he's actually, he has actually committed any of the acts that is prohibited by law, then it, it automatically, yung status niya, dati, magsasa, ma, maging part yun ng status niya. Kaya titignan nyo yan during eligibility check. So, kaya it pays to make, how do I say it in Tagalog? Yung kay kay, when you scan the pages of the eligibility check, it pays to yung TWG, titingnan nyo yan yung mga na-mention nila na mga uh, later yung sa mga incorporation, uh, mga incorporation papers nila, makikita yung mga pangalan, uh, baka may mga blacklisted, mga blacklisted yan. So titingnan nyo ng TWG ha, kasi meron naman tayong online portal for the blacklisted individuals. So also, penalties. So what are the penalties under penal Uh, provisions of RA 9184. Next slide. Lagi po nating tandaan, pag sinasabi pong penal, criminal po yan, may kulong po tayo dyan. Uh, unlike administrative and civil, uh, civil kasi is really pera yan, involved. Pag administrative naman, apektado yung trabaho at negosyo natin. No? Trabaho for us, negosyo for the prospective bidders, for the private sector na na-involved. Pag penal po, kulong po yan. Yan po yung time na may mas rehas tayo. Not only the principal penalty, may may accessory penalty pa yan. So, imprisonment of not less than 6 years and 1 day, but not more than 15 years. Pag sinasabi po kasing 6 years and 1 day, yan po yung minimum. Hindi po siya pwedeng babaan na maging 6 years na lang. Kasi po, pag sinasabing may 6 years, kaya importante po yung 1 day na wala yung Uh, findings, mayroon siyang guilt beyond reasonable doubt. So, yun yung quantum evidence of evidence required under criminal law. 
ang six year niya, hindi siya maging eligible for probation. So, kailangan talaga siyang mag-serve sa loob. So, may himas rehas po tayo dyan. Kaya, ingat-ingat. And not only that, meron pa tayong temporary or perpetual disqualification from public office. Tayo as public official, matatanggal tayo sa trabaho or masususpend. But only that, no? Sinab, although sinasabi dito, public official, pati din po yung private individuals. Pag may perpetual disqualification po yan, pag engineer siya dati sa isang And dati nagninegosyo siya, civil engineer siya, meron siyang contractor siya. Hindi na siya makapagnegosyo kasi permanently disqualified from transacting business with the government na siya. O sabi niya, apply na lang ako ng trabaho kay may friends naman kami. O, ingat din kasi hindi ka na din pwedeng i-appoint kasi nga may temporary, may perpetual disqualification ka na din dyan, no? Kasama po yan. Parang although it's mentioned only for public officials or for private individuals, hindi ka lulusot. Baka mamaya natanggal si engineer, municipal engineer dahil sa iyo tapos ikaw pa ma-appoint sa manaman, 'di ba? Parang ang pangit. <laughs> Ako si municipal just ang hayop na to, nakalusot ka. Sorry for my word. But anyway, so yun din. So permanent disqualification from transacting business with the government. Dati municipal engineer ako. 'Di ba? Dati budget officer ako, magaling ako sa mga bakbak eh. Ka ilang years ako diyan, pero dahil sa isang transaction na di ma Parang tawag namin dyan, di malas. May malas ako. Kaya siguro magninegosyo na lang ako. Anong negosyo mo? Magaling ako dito eh. Dito na magkakontraktor na lang ako. Supplier ako. Hindi din pwede. Kasi kasama na din po yun sa accessory penalty. Yung permanent disqualification. So, yan. Damay-damay na. So, may imprisonment pa. Affected po yung trabaho at negosyo din natin. No? So, yan yung penalty 6115. Um, take note that this is a malum prohibitum law. No, it's not a malice. It's not even. Ah, hindi lang ito punishable under revised penal code, but it's punishable by a special law. So, hindi siya lang na ano mas. Not only the intentions will be taken. Yung tawag namin yan is the intent to commit the offense. Then the fact that you committed the offense is already will already make you liable. So hindi magmamatter yung intent niyo. Hindi siya good defense yung intent niyo. So kaya careful tayo sa mga ganyan yung mga offenses na punishable under um special laws. So next slide. So jurisdiction over the offenses defined under the rule shall belong to appropriate courts according to laws existing at the time of the commission of the offense. So yung R.A. 9184 po, automatic po yan, dadaan talaga. Of course, kung may mga complaints, dadaan tayo sa uh, may request for consideration pa, yung feeder, may protest pa, yung RTC naman, sila yung mag-handle ng mga any petition for certiorari if in case there are questions on the decision of the back or the hope. No? But if it's a Penal provision, kasi yun yung sa standard, no? Pag may mga reklamo regarding the bidding procedures. But if may mga reklamo on offenses that were committed, pwede din po kayong charge and diretso na din sa ombudsman, office of the ombudsman. Kasi ombudsman, kasi very malawak yung ano nila. Uh, very malawak yung scope ng power nila, no? So they can even act as a prosecutor and they will also rule on the evidences against you and they will, can even refer forward the complaint against you to the courts. So, yan. Marami po tayong marami po silang pwedeng i-handle. Pero, with our regular process natin talaga, dadaan sa back yung mga complaints kasi you have to give the back the chance to correct itself. No? And then you go to the hope before it can be entertained by the courts. But the ombudsman will not look into that. Siyempre, mas malawak yung coverage nila. Pwede yun silang diretso na tatanggapin nila yung case against any of the members of the back or against other and pag private individuals. Sasabihin natin, ombudsman at sandigan bayan naman, they only hear and decide cases against officials, public officials. But of course, kahit private individual, pwede yung isama yan sa kaso pag they are conspiring with the public officials. And also, you have to take note, no? depende sa salary grade nyo, it could be the Sandigan Bayan. Ito yung sweldo ko, napasali lang ako kasi kulang ng tao, sinasali nila ako sa back, ba't nasa Sandigan Bayan ako? 
Alangan namang dalawang beses maghiring, di ba? Maghiring sa Sadigan Bayan, maghiring pa sa Supreme Court. Isasama ka na pag may may someone sa grupo nyo na uh, may jurisdiction yung Sadigan Bayan. No? So, and also that, anyway, tayo, we have to be open that being a public officer, not only as a member of the back or whatever, being a public officer, we are open to suits. So, pwede tayong mademanda pag may mga questions sa integrity natin, sa mga pinagagawa natin. And your best defense, of course, is your, the fact that you have not committed anything. <laughs> so, yun, yun lang yung defense natin talaga. So, that's why you have to know that these are the uh, um, the bodies where you could be tried no, for any acts, either the criminal, civil, administrative. So, offenses committed, iiwalay natin to, next slide, by public officers. Ano ang pwedeng maging mali natin as public officers? Pwedeng sinadya o hindi sinadya? So, yan, open any sealed, sealed beads, including but not limited to beads, that may have been submitted through the electronic system. So, pag uh, prematurely before the opening of bids, but after the submission of bids, kasi yung iba kasi, yung submission of bids nila, hindi same day uh, ng opening of bids. In some cases, same day. In some, hindi. Kasi hindi naman required, no? Um, like, for example, could be, kasi di ba yung mga bids, kasi pwede nilang isubmit uh, a day before, lalo na pagaling sa malayo, kasi we don't have geographical limitations na even from, even contractors from Holo or Batanes could already bid uh, from any procurement activities of LGUs in Cebu or Bohol or in Samar. No? So, since minsan, in-email na lang nila or submitted electronically, minsan nauna so even if they submitted early, they could even replace that after, as long as wala pa yung deadline. Uh, they could. Uh, you are not as members as TWG as Baksak. You should not open any of these sale bids. Otherwise, there is a presumption, na may there is a presumption na may matatawag na mangyayaring collusion or uh, corrupt practices. Bakit mo titingnan? May bala ka bang inform yung iba? Kung ano yung offer ng isa? Diba? Or may collusion. May mga sabuatang nangyayari sa likod kaya tinitingnan nyo magkano yung offer ng iba. No? Para, oh, pag malaki yung sa kanya, uh, withdraw ko yung bid ko, papalitan ko. So, may presumption kasi dyan eh. Uh, the reason why it is prohibited, it is to avoid you being influenced or being the means for corruption or collusion or being influenced. I uh, na maging lenient na lang kayo kasi sayang yan, mababa. Pag eligibility check pa lang, lenient na lenient kasi nakita nyo na pala magkano yung offer. So yun yung iniwasan ng law na pwede kayong ma-influence, ma-prejudiced by that. So another would be delaying without justifiable cost, the screening for procurement process. So delaying without justifiable cost, the screening of the eligibility, the opening of bids, the evaluation and post-evaluation of bids, the awarding of the contracts beyond the prescribed periods of action. So yung mga process na yun, as mentioned before sa inyo, yung sa standard bidding procedures. Pag may delay yun, dapat justifiable. Because if it's not justifiable, then it is considered an offense committed under RA 9184. So what could be the justifiable grounds? Of course, there's a lot, especially in the Philippines. This is a typhoon country, no? Madalas tayong binibisita ng mga bagyo. Minsan hindi talaga tayo makapag-reports. Office, nakaschedule na tayo ngayon. Bigla, super typhoon, no? Also, mga, um, kunyari, uh, lindol. Tapos, naiwan, tuma nag-start na kayo. Tapos, biglang lumindol, takbo kayo sa labas. Ay, hindi pala, magdak, ano pa pala kayo, tago pa pala kayo sa table. Pangat noon, di ko masyadong na i-embody yung mga disaster drill. So, you duck, you cover your head. Basta yun. Bagsak ako sa, ano, earthquake drill. So, yun. Tapos, labas kayo sa building, pag in-uninhabitable uninhabitable na siya, tapos naiwan nyo yun kasi hindi mabilis si Bak mag-isip. <laughs> hindi niya nabit-bit yung mga 
uh, nasubmit na na documents, yung box nyo. So, naiwan doon, hindi pa kayo pinapasok. That's a justifiable cost kasi ni-inspect pa yung building, hindi kayo makapasok, walang isang pinapasok sa inyo. Bumabaha, anda, hindi ka makapunta yung mga leaders. So, maraming it, reasons are justifiable and that's acceptable because the law does not require you to, to do the impossible. No? Uh, the law is a reasonable law. Uh, it's a reasonable guidelines but it will uh, it will make it liable if the reason is not justifiable cost. Ay, ma'am, kasi wala yung isang back member. Uh, bakit wala siya? Remember the jury duty. Uh, eto, laging victim dito. Na. And lagi kasi, especially sa LG, marami tayong seminar. Si Day LG, mahilig magpatawag sa inyo dati, no? Nagre-reklamo yung ibang mga mayor. Ah, kainis tong Day LG. Laging nawawala yung mga tao ko. Marami kasi kaming capacity development activities. So, minsan nalilimutan yung jury duty. And that's the, uh, that's the advantage of taking procurement activities uh, seriously, no? Ako, kahit sa office namin, um, as member of the PAC, although I'm, kasi mayroon kaming, ano talaga, mayroon kaming chairman, but I would, my suggestions are well taken because kasi nga medyo trainer din ako. So, lagi ka talaga sinasabi, it doesn't, kahit meron tayong requirement when kailangan may pre-procurement, uh, maganda lang talaga na ma-schedule lahat. Kasi especially for an agency, a procuring entity where almost everybody is going around, always on official business, maganda talaga ma-set yung schedule nyo. Or you could work around with your schedules, no? Kasi may jury duty tayo. In fact, it should have been a priority. But we cannot blame others talaga. Lagi, ewan siya, nakakainis, di ba? Lagi si boss, lahat na lang urgent. Ano ba talaga pinaka-urgent dito? Ano ba talaga ang uunahin ko? Ano ba talaga yung life and death situation? Lahat. <laughs> Isa lang katawan natin. So, yun. Uh, yun talaga. Dapat with, uh, justifiable, uh, dapat with justifiable cause. So, being absent lang because others yun na, tandaan natin, may jury duty tayo. Kung dahil lang wala, hindi kayo magkakorom kasi may mga OB yung mga tao, hindi yan justifiable cause. Kasi dapat na plano nyo na yung schedule nyo. No? Dapat they should have been there already kasi alam naman nila from the start kailan yung procurement activity, specific procurement activity. So another would be splitting of contracts. So one thing, take note, I notice about, especially sa LGUs, kasi Especially before, maliit lang yung era natin. Marami tayong big dreams. No money. <laughs> diba? And uh, uh, syempre, may pinapromise ni Mayor. Eh. Nakalaki ng promise ko sa mga tao during election. Tapos di pala ako makadeliver kasi pagdating pa late pala ng budget natin. I cannot work around with the budget. Especially next year, start ng term. Lalo na pag first termer si Mayor, hindi siya yung, uh, hindi siya yung nag-prepare ng executive budget. Uh, the previous year, napansin niya, ang liit pala ng budget sa ganito, sa ganyan, tapos ang laki ng promise ko. Sabi niya, maka pwede natin i-face. Of course, faces are, uh, faces when it comes to project are normal. Just as lots when it comes to procurements are normal. No? Acceptable yan. Hindi pwede yung isi-split niyo yung contract, andyan na yung budget lahat. Uh, yung project is not supposed to be, is, ano, parang isang ano siya talaga. Uh, tapos ihihiwalay-hiwalay nyo pa yung yung contractor nyo no? na wala hindi naman justified andan, andyan na yung buong budget ng uh, farm to market road bakit yung isang kilometer yung 2 kilometer 3 kilometer farm to market road andyan na yung buong budget tapos yung 1 kilometer kay ganito 1 kilometer kay ganito 1 kilometer kay ganito You can be guilty of splitting of contracts because it could have been done already by one contractor. Bakit kailangan nyo pang split-split? ba? Diba? Talagang may paraful ba tayo? Parang medal ba yan ng mga bata during graduation na kailangan tag-isang medal sila? No? Para masaya yung mga parents. Everybody masaya. Ang saya-saya, ba? Diba? So, hindi naman tayo ganun ka dyan. Hindi tayo Santa Claus, yung gobyerno. No? Ingat-ingat. Tapos, meron pang yung iba. Yung poste, andyan na. Bakit kayo nagpa-project ng market? Hindi nyo man pala afford. Poste lang pala kaya nyo. Sana hinintay nyo with bigger budget. 
Wala, poste lang. Eh, nung next, eh, hindi na siya. In-start niya sa last year niya sa term. Hoping that because of that project, baka i-elect ng mga tao yung kapatid niya o asawa niya. Also na, di ba? Subcontract nga ng iba yun. Pero, yung same lang yung nature, di ba? Pati windows, iba yung magsusupply ng windows sa taas, iba yung magsusupply ng windows sa baba. Splitting contract na yun, no? So, yun, ingat tayo dyan. Huwag masyadong generous sa, uh, sa parafol. So, we are ng parafol ng project. So, when the head of the agency abuses the exercise of his power to reject any and all bids, if you remember, section 41 of the RA9184, no, meron tayong reservation clause by the hope if he finds like may hindi nasunod sa procurement, procedure, or disadvantages to the government na yung contract or hindi natuloy yung kontrata or maraming factors na pwede niyang i-exercise ni Hope, the head of procuring entity, yung reservation clause niya. Now, what if he keeps on doing that? Kasi minsan talaga nagkakamali tayo, di ba? What if he keeps on doing that? It depends na if it appears already that he abuses the exercise of his power to reject any and all bids, the key word here is abuse then, of course, he can be charged against RA9184 for penal offense. That's considered a penal offense. Ha? Hindi yan administrative lang. Bakit? Kasi nga, it could open, it could be an indicator that there is corruption and collusion or connivance that is happening. Bakit ayaw na ayaw niya pag yan yung nanalo? Baka naman yung favorite, hindi nanalo. di ba? Baka laging may mas lowest bidder. Tapos hindi nila in-expect yung lowest bidder yan, yung mapipili. Kasi yung napapromisan pala ng project, hindi siya, hindi mas malakas siya ng 1 peso. Kasi di ba ganun, minsan ganun lang yung konting difference lang, especially with the, quant with the item price. So yun, kaya pag na-abuse yun, the keyword is of course, abuse, yun yung uh, may liability tayo, tayo. Meron pa pala, nalimutan ko sa taas. Unduly influencing or exerting undue pressure on any member of the back or any officer of the procuring entity. Ito can, is done by public officers, but it could be done even by public officers outside of the procuring entity. For example, Dalawang director magkaibigan. Si director A at director B. Diba? Iba-ibang agency sila. Magkaibigan sa lagi sila nagkakasama during mga seso uh, activities eh. Alam niyo yung mga director. Kanyari, si director B, oh, kaibigan ko to siya, nagsupply sa amin. ganda-ganda ng building namin. Oh, ganda-ganda ng panels namin. Sige, mag-procure kayo ng ganito. Sabi ni Mayor B, sige, sige, procure ako. Gusto ko din ganyan ka-modern looking na building, na uh, exterior ng building ko. Yeah. So, nag-procure sila. O, oh, ba? Tapos, uy, may ibang sumasali na supplier. Sabi nila, hindi. Akong bahala dyan sa isang supplier. Papramisan ko yan na siya na lang bahala. Uh, siya na lang dito sa project ko. Itong supplier na to, siya yung ganinan mo. May undue influence yung isang mayor. So, although hindi siya kasama sa procuring entity, nakikisali siya. So, tinatako niya isa pag, pag sumasali ka sa bidding na yan, hindi kita pa jo-joinin dito sa bidding ko sa isa. So, yun, may undue influence or exerting undue pressure, no? On any member of the bank, any of the bank. O, ikan, hindi ko yan ipopromote. Hindi kita ipopromote pa. Ah, hindi ko ipopromote yung anak mo. Nag-apply yung anak mo dito. Hindi ko yan tatanggapin pag hindi mo i-grant. So, yung mga example ng mga undue pressure, no? nakikialam sa lab, yung mga tagalabas, hindi sa part ng procuring entity, pero nag-exercise sila, nag sila ng undue influence to, uh, to affect the result of the procurement activity. So, yun yung titingnan, kahit hindi yung public officer na yun, sabi niya, ha, may lang ako ng, ano, let's use mga, Wala akong tinatama na, hindi ko talaga alam. Sige. Ma'am, uh, ano? Uh, mayor lang ako ng municipality. Eh, ba't nasama ako sa kaso ng back ng municipality? Eh, kasi nakikisali ka. No? So, yun, yun. So, pag nakikialam. So, yan. 
by private individuals naman, ano naman yung mga liabilities na pwede sila magkagame, magkamali? Ito, nasasali to sa pollution. Agreement and submission to submit bids with pre-arranged lowest bid. Basta't ka lagi natin pinapakalaman, yung nagdenegosyo sila, diba? Nagdenegosyo lang naman sila. Parang, kanya ka ano lang, parang bigayan. May, para buhay tayong lahat, may pangbigas tayong lahat. Eh kasi po, Remember, you are one of the principles of procurement, yung competitiveness, competitiveness natin. So, competition kasi is a very, one of the important principles of procurement because it guarantees the government a chance to have value for money, to get the same quality of goods for a, less, for a lesser amount paid. So, kung may competition, we will... Tapos, well, maganda yung pagkagawa ng technical specs natin na hindi talaga pwedeng, hindi pwedeng i-compromise yung quality. But because there is competition, we will get it for a better price. Diba? Sana. Yun yung idea. But if there is collusion between the bidders or contractors, sino, ah, ikaw muna ako, sige, mag-submit lang ako, kunyari yun na. So, kasi minsan pag isa lang yung uh, isa lang yung nagbibid, minsan nagtatanong tayo, di ba, bakit, bakit asan yung iba? Di ba, may suki tayo dito pag ganito mga project, bakit hindi sila nagbibid? Sa amin talaga, nagtatanong kami yan. Kasi alam na namin sino yung mga usual nagbibid ng mga ganitong print, sa printing materials, sa mga ganitong uh, sakyan. So, nagtataka ka, bakit hindi nagbibid yung iba? Hindi naman mababang mababa yung APC mo. So, titingnan mo niyan, baka mamaya naghaharangan sila sa ito. May usapan na. Lalo na pag batch-batch, especially, di ba, mayroon tayo ngayon sa mga medical kits. Oh. Yeah, first batch muna sa contract tracer, kasi first batch ay every six months lang contact tracers, di ba? So, may mga, oh, first batch, bili tayo ng mga face shield, tsaka mask. Oh. <coughs> Bakit ano? Bakit sila lang? Isa lang. Tapos sa next naman, kung hindi na rin nagbibid, yung isa, iba na naman. Parang may usapan ba? Kasi it's not normal. Every businessman wants to gain profit. So bakit, bakit uh, hindi nagbibid yung iba? Nagbabayad naman kami. So, makaka-question ka doon. Eh, as back members, CDB, you should be observant of that. And you know, kasi tayo alam natin sino yung mga nagsusupply natin palagi. So, dapat observant tayo bakit wala ngayon. Bakit ito? Sa ngayon, A. Sa ngayon, next, si B na naman. Kasi, di ba? Parang may sabuatan na nangyayari. That's a part of the use of process. Then, agreement to secure undue advantage. So, yun. Any undue advantage uh, is presumed na yung undue advantage, ang gobyerno ang nadidihado. At pag ang gobyerno ang nadidihado, Siyempre, may liability yan kasi we are supposed to protect the interests of the government, us being government officials and employees. So, if we allow these private individuals to secure undue advantage, it is as if we allow the government to lose this, uh, to lose, uh, to suffer injury or to be taken advantage. So, sino magpo-protect sa government? No? Tayo, kasi we are the representatives of the government. Government itself is abstract. Tayo ang concrete na concrete existence ng government. The offices, the employees, the career servants, the officials. Kasi the government itself, kung sila lang, kung government as a concept lang, hindi they cannot protect itself. So, another would be malicious submission of different bids through two or more persons. Ano, andito ka din. Uy, last. Or kaya, napansin nyo, as back. May pinagawa kayong ano, uh, market. Tapos sa next, pro dalawang project pinibid nyo. Yung isa market, yung isa daan. Tapos napansin nyo, yung isa pickup license under ABC Corporation. Ito yung authorized representative niya. ABC Corporation naman sa isang project nagbibid. Ito yung authorized representative niya. Tinanong mo, magkakilala ba sila? Hindi. Alam ba niya yung ganitong project? Hindi. Ay, may isang, may dalawang tao nagre-represent ng isang corporation. 
no? Pareho silang authorized representative. Hindi nila alam ang binagagawa ng isa't isa. Tapos nung chine-check mo, talagang wala silang connection sa isa't isa. Paano sila naging one corporation? Or kaya din, di ba? Parang different bits through two or more persons. May ano tayo. Parang the more entry, the more chances of winning. So, more marami siya kasi kung isa lang yung bid niya, baka mamaya may mas lowest sa kanya. So, dalawa tatlong bid niya para siya, para grabe naman kung may mas mababa pa sa kanya. ba? Diba? Kasi ang nangyari niyan, pag siya lang pa rin ang mababa, tapos hindi naman iba yung uh, yung next lowest, pwede din siya mag-withdraw. Isip niya, ah, mag-withdraw lang ako pag wala namang iba. Diba? So, employment of scheme disadvantages to the public. Yun nga. Any scheme that is that is disadvantageous to the public, we are for profits. Of course, we understand that our suppliers, contractors need to gain profits. Otherwise, we cannot entice them to bid for government projects, no, di ba? So, profit is a great motivation for any businessman. But we have to make sure as back members or as hope na we cannot allow these people to employ schemes which will be disadvantages to us. So yung um, nalulugi na yung gobyerno, okay lang naman yung makagain sila ng profit, huwag lang disadvantages level to the government. Take for a while before we proceed with the administrative sanction. Hello? Yes, Hello? yes ma'am. Go ahead okay, for... Okay, let's uh, flash some ABP na lang siguro. Thanks. Philippines is going to buy green. Our government is taking the lead. The Philippines Green Public Procurement Roadmap avoid harmful chemicals and are manufactured through cleaner processes. They are efficient to use and consume less energy and water. At the end of life, precious materials are recycled. GBP reduces the pressure on the environment. is a partnership between the government and businesses. GPP opens up new, exciting, and reliable opportunities for businesses supplying green products. This in turn makes green products also affordable for private households. A first batch of 20 product categories has been prioritized for GPP and more will be selected over time. The priority Common supplies and equipment products are multi-copy paper, toilet paper, record books, cleaners, chairs, disinfectant sprays, trash bags, liquid hand soap, detergent powder, and LED lights and bulbs. The priority non-common supplies and equipment products are computer and laptop monitors, air conditioners, Vehicles, fridges and freezers, copiers, paints and varnishes, food and catering services, training hotels and facilities, toilets and urinals, and textiles such as uniforms and work clothes. The well-established public procurement processes in the Philippines, such as the Philgems, will ensure fairness, transparency, and open competition for the green venture. Everyone can become an active consumer of green products, which save energy and water, are not harmful for health and climate, and which are recyclable. All right, Attorney Aiza, um, Hi, will you I'm proceed? Back. I'm back. So, I hope young Iba also took advantage of the opportunity na to respond to nature's call. So, let's proceed with the 
administrative sa a continue with the administrative sanctions. So yun nga sa private individuals, we have to uh, watch out for this any for any of this uh, things collusive practices that should be happening behind us. So no, when two or more bidders agree and submit different bids as if they were bona fide, when they know that one or more of them was much higher than the other, yun nga anti competition sa and may collusion siya nangyayari trying to take advantage of the uh, situation na uh, minsan, especially the bidders, uh, uh, the, uh, the procuring entity is just desperate to find bidders for that. Kasi di ba ayaw natin, ayon ayaw natin nagka-failure bidding. Kasi nga, doble effort. Uh, ako, I, personally, I don't like it when there's a failure of bidding. Kasi sayang yung effort nyo. And I understand that some LGUs don't have, unlike the big cities or big provinces or accessible LGUs and national governments with big budgets, some LGUs really don't have uh, a lot of bidders. Minsan nga, nag-fail kasi wala talaga interested, lalo na malayo, infra, tapos dadalhin pa lahat doon. Because we know contractors sila, especially yung mga equipments sila, heavy equipments sila, kukunti lang. Tapos may project sila dito, hindi nila matatransfer ka agad. So they are not interested, especially projects on far-flying areas. So doon nahihirapan yung mga LGUs. And that is one of the things that I see in the reality, no? Na hindi nakakonsider minsan ng law, taha, ang laka ng expectation natin na maraming magbibid. It happens to us. Maraming nagbibid sa atin kasi big agencies. Tapos yung mga big cities, they never lack of suppliers or contractors. But for small LGUs talaga, naghahanap na lang ng paraan minsan yung mga hope may mag-proceed lang yung project. So, some of those paraan talaga minsan borderline na siya na mga corrupt practices para lang may magka-project. And some private individuals are taking advantage of that. no? So, when two or more bidders agree, submit different bids as if they're bona fide, then two or more bidders enter into an agreement which call upon one to refrain from bidding the from procurement contracts. Uh, no? Pinag-uusapan na lang nila kung paano kumita dyan. So when a bidder maliciously submits different bids to two or more persons, salo na mag- magbibid sila dun sa mga malayong-malayong bayan na hindi alam na hindi naman pala sila yan, yung corporation na yan, pinapagamit lang. So when a bidder by himself or in connivance with others employs schemes which tends to restrain the natural rivalry of the party. All of these uh, prohibited uh, acts are designed, are enumerated, are included in order to avoid situations where there will be collusion, coercive, fraudulent, and corrupt practices. Kasi nga, pinipresume ng law na um, may nag-take advantage. Pag nangyayari yung mga practices na yun, may kumikita behind my nag take advantage sa government and we want to avoid that situation so yun lang talaga babantayan and the more you are the more ka kasi nakikinig ako din like for me when i do seminars dati may mga seminars ako with paisi i don't know why when i introduce ako sa nila then they included me already you know the philippine institute of civil engineers you hear stories like that so although i keep quiet kasi minsan hindi naman nila alam ako pala yung Ako pala yung lecture nila at the start. Kasi especially 10 years ago, I was a lot younger. So, minsan naririnig mo during dinner. Ah, okay. So, these are the ano pala dun sa project dun. So, with Day LG before, we had Bea and Ray. Uh, the Bohol Earthquake Assistance. The uh, Yolanda Projects. And then, we also have this like of mga road projects or salintubig, BUB projects. Maraming mga kakilala doon. Tapos you hear stories. So, yun yung babantayan din. You as back. You talk to each other. Kasi nga, diba, they also talk to each other. Alangan naman yung mga suppliers na ang they talk to each other to connive, to connive against the government. Tapos kayo, you don't talk to each other. Hindi nyo malalaman. Hindi pala yan yung, ano, na may mga collusion pala nangyayari or misrepresentation. So yeah, there's a question about questions later kung kailan kami mag There will be an open forum after this. Um, just wait lang. Ah, kasi we need to be continuous in the discussion. 
So by private individuals and your submission of eligibility requirements containing false information, again, I'm just mentioned it's fraudulent, no? Misrepresentation of facts. Using name of another, allowing another to use one's name. Submission of bidding documents containing false information. So you and the knowledge check. Time for knowledge check again. Yes, ma'am. All right, participants, for the second knowledge check, the question is, is the non-submission or delay in submission of documents for the final awarding of contract considered automatically as withdrawal of bid? Is it A, yes, or B, no, must be proven without, to be without justifiable cause? So I would also like to remind our Zoom participants to please accomplish the daily attendance sheet by clicking the link provided by our event secretariat in our Zoom chat box. So if you have or are experiencing difficulties in accomplishing the form, kindly inform our technical team through the Zoom chat box as well. So again, no, I highly encourage our participants to join our poll um, or our knowledge check. Because this is also a way for us to gauge kung talagang natututo po ba tayo sa ating learning activity. Di ba, naman po, hindi naman po um, ma-take against us kung nagkamali po tayo during the knowledge check. But it is just a way to test ourselves. All right, I think ma'am, majority of our participants have answered in the poll and majority answered no, must be proven without justifiable cause. Is this the correct answer, ma'am? I think the correct answer is no, no. Although we would say na hindi tayo dapat sobrang lenient sa mga uh, suppliers natin or prospective suppliers or contractors natin, bidders. There could be other reasons also may mga delays, especially in the posting of bonds, no? performance security bond after sila ma-award ng contract. And also the signing of the contract itself. So there could be other reasons for the delay which is justifiable and it is acceptable. Kasi mayroon naman tayong maximum period eh. Hindi naman talaga yan. Like, although we set in our letter for them awarding the contract, oh, you should submit this within ganito na araw, ilang days na ganyan. But uh, as for as long as um may valid reason sila, it could be extended. Hindi po yan, hindi po kayo maging liable if you allow them to more time to comply. Basta hindi, ang, hindi siya automatic na withdrawal. Kasi pag may uh, justifiable cause for the delay of their submission of other documents. Especially pag, di ba, pag malayo sila. Kasi hindi lahat ng contractor nasa malapit eh. We are not required anymore to only um, award contracts or to allow contractors to bid those nasa malapit lang. So yung iba nasa Batanes, nasa Hulo, nasa Sambuanga. So minsan may delay sa courier yung sa mga contracts, yung signed na contracts or yung sa posting of uh, performance uh, security nila. May maging problem but not necessarily big enough for them to withdraw. So if it's justifiable, then it can be allowed. So yeah, yun lang siya. And I understand there's there are 36 who said yes. Actually, para admirable yun, no? Kasi ako, I always ask, uh, as bidders, we should try to be strict and follow the process. Pero this is one of the instances talaga na nirequire din na we give also, uh, for a justifiable cause, we give also due consideration. But in other, anything else, dapat talaga strict tayo. Especially in the 
uh, examination of uh, and the submission of bids, yung opening, yung preliminary bid evaluation, yung uh, post qualification, dapat strict tayo doon, ha? So, I like the attitude. <laughs> They may be wrong, but I like the attitude. <laughs> Thank you so much, Puma, for that explanation. So we will proceed with the liability, civil liability. So as I mentioned earlier, um, one act would give rise to three liabilities. No, so one is the penal liability, and then the rest, and then the two would be the civil and administrative liability. Liability, although they require different quantums of evidence, a penal talaga para makulong ka kailangan. Guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Yan. Parang walang kahit counting ayot of evidence na magpuprove na you are guilty. You have the criminal liability. So, but we also have other liabilities, no? Uh, not necessarily just pena lang. Hindi pwedeng, hindi yung kulong lang. So, it could be civil liability. Pwedeng idagdag yan. Uh, in, usually, yung civil liability talaga, kasama ni siya dun sa decision sa penal Um, sa decision sa criminal case. Unlike administrative that is administrative liability that is um, uh, that goes through another procedure, minsan yung civil liability and criminal liability, they go already together. So yung civil liabilities that can be included in any violation of RA 918 RA 9184 pa lang po, pinag-usapan natin ha, marami pang kasunod. So without prejudice to administrative administrative sanctions without prejudice to administrative sanctions that may be imposed in proper case a conviction under RA under RA 9184 and the IRR or RA 3019 shall carry with it the civil liability which may either consist of restitution for the damage done or for future in favor of the government for any unwarranted benefit derived from the act or acts in question or both at the discretion of the court. At the discretion of the court, the keyword there. Kasi kung makita ng korte na wala, although may maling nagawa, pero wala siyang unwarranted benefit na nakukuha, kasi baka iba yung nakakuha ng unwarranted benefit, pero siya lang yung naging tool, kasi medyo engot siya, masyari siyang inosente, o di wala ang igagrant na forfeiture, ang court, no? Kahit yun pa yung pinipray ng prosecutor or ng ombudsman. So, restitution for the damage done, however, is non-negotiable. Uh, Kasi pag may offense, pinipresume niya at uh, tinitingnan yan kung may damage ba sa against the government. So, if makita na may damage against the government, kahit wala kang unwarranted benefit, kasama yun sa babayaran mo. So, ano ibabayad ko? Doon na makukuha yung mga benefits natin na makukuha sana natin for retirement. no Sayang yung GSIS natin, doon makukuha. Doon yun ma-dededuct or may mga receivables tayo sa office natin. So, yun. Restitution for the damage done. Kung ano yung nawala sa gobyerno, dapat mag-restitute tayo. Ano yung damage na nawala sa gobyerno? For future in favor of the government for any unwarranted benefit, kung ano yung nakuha mo, ibabalik mo yan sa gobyerno. Minsan, kahit wala namang damage sa gobyerno, although that's improbable na may, ano, kasi nga, di ba, may presumption talaga na may damage sa government. Kasi damage just could be actual, it could be exemplary. Marami eh. So, ipo-forfeit pa rin kung may nakukuha kang benefit. Sabi, benefit ko na employ yung anak ko. Ano yung... Unwarranty benefit doon yung anak ko. Pwedeng, pwedeng at the discretion of the court, sasabihin ng, gober, ng judge, o oh, yung benefit na nakukuha ng anak mo as, as after being employed to the uh, private corporation which you are not supposed to have dealings with or transactions with. So yun, babawiin yun. Eh, nakain ko na. Ay, through other means. Marami pa naman pwedeng i-garnish tsaka pwedeng i-attach yung gobyerno. Yun din. When it comes to civil liability, only courts can uh, give uh, this kind, uh, can only grant this prayer kasi nga, may power sila to garnish and to attach. Whereas, yung mga administrative agencies like, for example, si who, no? Pag siya yung nag-decide na may mga administrative liability, wala naman siya, hindi naman siya maka-attach or maka-garnish, no? 
So, kaya wala hindi to binigay sa kanya sa court lang to. So, another would be administrative sanction. So, tapos, pwedeng makulong, pwedeng ma-disqualify to public office, pwede ding hindi ma-permanently -dis disqualify to do transactions with the government, may restitution for the damage done pa, may forfeiture pa of unwarranted benefits. O kaya, yun nga pala sa forfeiture of unwarranted benefits, ha? Any income, paano nyo nalala, nila nalalaman ng unwarranted benefit? Binibase po yan sa income nyo at saka asset nyo. Pag yung asset nyo, sobrang mababa, puro utang lang nire-reflect nyo sa salin nyo, tapos ang yaman-yaman nyo sa Instagram, kasi sa Instagram nag-iayabangan, hindi naman sa Facebook, di ba? Sa Facebook, puro tayo mga picture ng Christmas party dyan. Sa Instagram, ando na yung mga bags natin, yung mga rilo natin, yung mga travel abroad natin. Pag nakikita doon na yung lifestyle mo, hindi na ba match doon sa salin mo, ay talagang pagdududahan yan na unwarranted benefit yan. So, titingnan niyo yun. So, let's go to administrative sanction. Ano naman yung administrative sanctions? Of course, we have suspension and blacklisting. Automatic yung suspension, tsaka so blacklisting. So, in addition to the penal and civil sanctions, the hope subject to the authority delegated to the back, if any, shall impose on bidders or prospective bidders the administrative penalty of suspension for one year, if it first offense pa lang, for two years of second offense from participating in the public bidding process, and disqualification from part further participating in the public being uh, public bidding being undertaken by the procuring entity. Pag suspension, um, pag suspension, pwedeng one year, pwedeng two years, depende pang ilan beses na niyang nagawa yan. Maka naman recidivist na yan, and I mean, hindi recidivist, habitual offender na yan, di ba? So, mas mahaba-haba yun. And it will uh, disqualify yung bidder who found, uh, prospective bidder who is found liable sa mga any procurement activities ng agency, that particular agency, no? And any prospective biddings, any public bidding being undertaken by that agency or procuring entity. Pwedeng SUC, pwedeng NGU, and LGU. So yun, yung pwedeng i-punish. Another would be disqualification from uh, failure uh, for feature of bid security or performance security. So, depende yon kung kailan na found out yung uh, yung offense. So, minsan, andyan pa yung during bidding process pa. So, yung bidding security pa ang pwede forfeit. Minsan, yung mga prohibited acts nila na discover while after na nag-grant yung notice of award. Di ba? Or while during contract implementation stage na. So, siyempre, wala nang bid security. Ano na ang ipo-forfeit? So, yung performance security dun ipo dun yun yung ipoporfit ng agency. So, um, of course, we have blacklisting, but it will be discussed separately, no? So, yun yung mga administrative sanction natin, suspension, disqualification from further uh, participation and the public bidding being undertaken by the procuring entity, for feature of bid security or performance security, and being blacklisted. So, Wala pa yung liquidated damages ha? may na-mention sa inyo sa during bidding procedures na liquidated damages. Doon yung sa contract implementation stage naman yun. Ito, yung sa mga offenses pa lang committed during bidding procedures. So, may mga suspension, may disqualification, at may blacklisting at for future. Yun yung sa administrative sanctions. So, now, that is, that those are the offenses under RA 918 or yung specifically uh, enumerated under the Government Procurement Reform Act. So, how about RA3019? We will proceed with the liabilities under RA3019. So, yung RA3019 po, yun yung po yung anti-graft and pura practices law. Uh, the offenses that are punishable there could include either acts committed during procurement or other acts. So, yung RA918 for purely kasi procurement activities yung ina-anticipate niya, no? So, pero sa RA3019, it involves any acts which could be called tainted with corruption. So, yun yung, yun yung difference under RA918 for kasi yung may liability lang yun nag-induce, nag-persuade, nag-influence because it's considered a coercive practice, di ba? yung threatening to harm or injure. 
So, con, you, ano yun? Con, uh, coercive practices yun under RA 9184. But under RA 3019, ikaw, pag inalaw mo yung iba to persuade you, induce you, or influence you to commit sa a violation, so of course, the keyword here, if ang yung persuasion ba, induction ba, or influencing ba, is for you to commit or violate or offense, no? Pag wala naman, iba lang yung pinapersuade, influence ka, hindi naman siya consisting of a violation. Hindi, walang ano doon, liability. So you have to be strict with the elements. So, why is it na ako pa nga yung biktima, new pictures ko yung pinapantakot, kuha ng ex-boyfriend ko, tapos na-hack yung cellphone ng ex-boyfriend ko, tapos ako pa yung matidemanda. Kasi ganito po yun, your public officers, uh, part po ng requirement po para maging members tayo ng BAC, tinitingnan po yan yung integrity natin as a person, as a BAC member, di ba? Remember the requirements in the appointment of the BAC? Kasama po yun yung integrity natin. As a public officer, as a BAC member, pinipresume ng law na we act accordingly. At all time, at all times, either in or outside, inside or outside of our work. So, kung we act with integrity, the lesser chance na may, na makahanap ng butas yung iba para takutin tayo. And also, if you act with integrity, you are supposed to report this deed. Ang hirap, no? Kasi nga, especially if life na natin, yung involved or life ng mga anak natin, Oh, buhay ng anak ko, hostage yung anak ko. Diyos ko, wag naman. Ang grabe, billion ba yan? Yung contract na yan? Pari hostage pa yung anak ko. <laughs> Di ba? So, so, for example, or reputation ng anak ko or life ng, life ng asawa ko o yung involved dyan, baka alisan ng oxygen yung asawa ko sa public hospital, sa government hospital. Oh, so, maraming involved dyan And you're expected to still maintain integrity even in the face of these threats, no? Even in the face of this um, coercive, coercive dangers of coercive practices. So, yun lang siguro. You are, uh, this provision emphasizes the principle that members of the VAC should not in any way allow themselves to be pressured or influenced in any way and that they should police, or person their functions based on the mandate of the law and the dictates of their good conscience. So, yun yung in-expect sa inyo. Next would be, of course, directly or indirectly requesting or receiving any gift, present, share, percentage, and benefit for himself or for any other person in connection with any contract or transaction between the government and any other party wherein the public officer in his official capacity has to intervene under the law. So, claro po yan, directly or indirectly, pwedeng dumiretso sa iyo yung benefit, pwedeng sa pamilya mo. Requesting or receiving, pwedeng hiningi mo, sinosolicit mo talaga na makakuha ka ng ganyang benefit, or taus-puso mong tinatanggap. Yung benefit na yun. It's Christmas. Ang, ang, ang bait-bait ni contractor. O, diba? Kahit hindi ka kumain sa litsyon na yan kasi vegan ka, pero inalaw mo yung mga office mates mo, yung mga sakot mo sa office na kumain dyan, kasama pa rin yun. Indirectly na nga, receiving pa lang, pero liable pa rin pa tayo niyan. No? Any gift, present, share, percentage, or benefit. Either cash or in kind. Kasama po yun. So, nasabihin natin, ba na yan? Employment yung benefit. Nakapasok ako ng ilang, may, may security agency yung asawa ko. Yung, dahil kaibigan ko si contractor, lagi kami nagkakandak ng activity sa hotel niya, kasi supplier, binigay niya sa asawa ko yung contract. Hindi ko naman hinihi yun. But you indirectly receive no, that benefit. And you are not supposed to transact with them at uh, during the time of the bidding or even one year after the termination of the contract. So any gift, 
present. I remember before when I was still a new in back, may mga ganyan. Uh, I was nagulat kasi I came from the private sector at first when I started as a lawyer in 2009. Then in 10, 2012, 2011 and 12, I joined the government and the back automatic naging back member ako. Kahit at the time, I wasn't trained yet by uh, GPPB. Nagulat ako, may mga sinisend sa Christmas. Ako tutukutuku, ano yan? Hindi pa ako bawi sa law school ko. Huwag <laughs> niyo ako, baka madisbar ako sa kalokohan niyo. Diba? So, iso, sinuli ko kagad. Ayokong, hindi, ayokong hawakan. Bakit? Kasi takot na takot ako. Bata pa ako, ayokong makulong, ayokong madisbar. Kaya sa mga classmate ko, pumasa ako, tapos ma, ano lang kaagad, madisbar. So, it depends also. Sabi ko nga, yung kurap talaga, matapang sila talaga. So, kasi kung matatakotin ka, like me, medyo matakotin ako, uh, sa mga ganyan, inisip ko lagi baka malugi ako sa law school ko pag natanggal, disbar ako kaagad. So, yung mga matatakotin talaga, hindi pwede ganito, ha? Kahit yung mga matatakotin na ingot, naiiyak yan pag may kaso. Sabi mo, nagpapalo lang kami kasi yung boss ko kasi sabi, okay lang daw yan. I've seen I will not name names, but I know someone is, uh, she's a wife of a mayor who was previously a contractor of government projects. So, syempre, dati iba yung rules sa, sa government procurement. Sabi na usawa niya, oh, pwede yung ganyang contract. Kasi contractor ako dati, magaling ako dyan. So, sabi ng mayor na babae, asawa siya, kasi nagtapos na yung the terms ng asawa niya, sinunod ko lang yung advice sa asawa ko. tagal-tagal ng kontrakto ng asawa ko, siyempre, akala ko tama. Naku, pasensya na talaga, hindi pwede yan. So, may siguro, I, I don't know if he received benefits, but the law usually presumes that you receive benefit pag may mga ganyang, ano, that you receive. You have to be careful because the law presumes a lot and it could work against you. So, careful with what you receive, especially during Christmas, di ba? Kasi, before sa private sector, kasi yung mga retainers namin, they will receive, uh, we will be receiving gifts from retainers. Akala ko normal yun. But, although, sa law school naman, lagi naman pinag-aralan itong RA3019, no? Pero, no, I was in the government, I realized that it's true pala. Ang dami pala talaga magtatay. Minsan, wholehearted lang talaga yung mga wholeheartedly binibigay sa'yo sa sobrang happy ng contractor, but you shouldn't. Okay? You shouldn't receive. That is if you fear for your life. <laughs> so, yun lang. <laughs> uh, accept at your own risk. So, next would be accepting or having any member of his family accept employment in a private enterprise which has pending official business with him during dependency thereof or within one year after its termination. The key word here is accepting. Ha? Huh? or having any member of his family accept employment. So if andyan na siya talaga from the start, hindi na po yung kasali. No? But of course, it eh, ikaw, you're a responsible member, you should, you know, oh, my and daughter worked for you. Tapos yan, titingnan mo yan kung anong, gaano ba importante yung role ng daughter mo dyan sa company na yan. Kasi di ba, your daughter is your first degree relative. Tapos baka may importante yung role niya dyan sa company. It doesn't matter if your daughter or your son is a top notcher in the accountancy board or the civil engineering board or a highly recruited architect, no? Nagtitrain pa, nag apprentice pa sa abroad. It doesn't matter if it's really highly recruited and that it is, uh, it is, it is not a surprise that he would be hired by his own merits. Kahit own merits pa niya, kahit hindi mo sinasabi na dahil lang anak ko siya, kaya siya na hire. The fact is, our, under R83019, it is bawal. So kahit hindi pa dahil anak mo siya, kaya siya na hire dyan, bawal po yan. And you can be liable under R83019. So another would be causing, ito, paborito ito ng mga bitter, mga kalaya. Causing any undue injury to any party, including the government, uh, or, next po, next na slide. Okay, section 3E, ito, marami dito. Causing any undue injury to any party, including the government, 
or giving any private party any unwarranted benefit, advantage, or preference in the discharge of this official, administrative, or judicial functions through manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross and excusable negligence. Ay, paborito po yan ng mga bitter, not only in the procurement, but even us who are doing our regular jobs. ba? Diba? Pag makikita nila, ah, I was injured. I was unduly injured. I was unduly hurt. I'm really hurt. Diba? Para nakakata ni Mimiyo. It's really hurt na magmahal ng ganito. So, and cause any, any undue injury to any party, including the government or any private party. So sila, pag nasaktan sila sa mga uh, nakikita nilang pinagagawa nyo, gagamitin nila yan. But always remember, your best defense, no? If you exercise your function of either uh, either administrative or judicial function, without manifest partiality, with good faith, or without gross and excusable negligence, and that is your defense. Why? Because undue injury to any party must be exercised with manifest partiality. May bias. Evident bad faith. Obvious, alam na niyang mali, inagawa pa rin niya. Diba? Alam na niya. Na-advise na siya na wag, wag mong gawin yan. Ginagawa pa rin niya. Or gross and excusable negligence. Talagang hindi yung negligence na hindi mo talaga may excuse kasi na talaga obvious na alam mo na ang pwede maging consequence pag ginawa mo niyan tinutuloy mo pa rin and eto sasabihin ko sa inyo tayo po bilang train kaya nga tayo nire-require talaga tayo na mag-regularly update sa training natin as back, back members para hindi pa tayo tamaan yung inexcusable negligence no tapos evident bad faith. Kasi ini-equip kayo ng mga head of procuring entities nyo na mag-train ganito. Ilang oras kayo dito nakaupo? Ilang oras, ilang, ilang pag ilang araw na to? Yan yung oras na inalaw kayo ng hope nyo, ng immediate supervisor nyo, na instead gumawa na, instead mag-attend sa mga kailangan niyang ipagawa sa'yo, nagtitrain ka. Para wala ka po kayong excuse Later, sabi niyo, hindi ko po alam yan. Ay, naku, dapat alam mo. Nag-spend ka ng time mag-train, di ba? Ako, sabi ko, sarili ko, ang hirap maging back member at same time trainer ako ng ganito. Wala ako, lagi akong walang excuse. Hindi ako pwede mag-claim ng good faith. Hindi ako pwede mag-claim ng good faith. Kaya sinasabi ko, sabi, hindi ako pipirma yan. Hindi ako makaklaim ng good faith pag pipirmahan ko yan. Tapos medyo may question ako kung necessary ba yan. Hindi. So, yan. Open, open charge yung ginagamit ng mga ampalaya. Pero ang best defense nyo, yeah, as long as hindi yan manifest partiality, evident bad faith, and gross and excusable negligence, lusot kayo. Now, let's go to uh, next. So, G naman. Entering on behalf of the government into any contract or transaction manifestly and grossly disadvantages to the same, whether or not the public officer profited or will profit thereby. Sabi nga, sa civil liability niya, may damage, consider yan as may damage to the government. Either kumikita ka or hindi. Kahit wala ipo-forfeit sa'yo kasi wala ka namang unwaran, wala ka namang unwarranted benefit, wala kang profit na nakukuha, consider yan as may damage sa government kasi nga disadvantages sa kanya yung contract or transaction. So, automatic ba? Sabi na iba, maraming nagre-reklamo. Ma'am, binibigay ang contract na yan kahit walang bidding. Di automatic yan kasi di ba the law allowed you to uh, negotiate contracts or procurements. May mga marami tayong alternative mode of procurements. Hindi discuss yan sa inyo earlier. So it means allowed yan. Hindi automatically presume na dahil walang bidding, disadvantageous na yung contract. What makes it disadvantageous? It's the overpriced contract amount. It's, sabi nyo, pasok naman sa ABC. Ang tanong, yung ABC nyo, paano yan siniset? Baka naman mamaya hinakaling, hindi nyo na mga market analysis yan. Kumukopya lang kayo sa ibang LGU. Aminin. Di ba? Marami sa atin nagkukopyahan lang kasi magkakakilala tayo sa iba-ibang LGUs. Di ba? Our colleagues. Meron kasi tayong mga leagues. leagues eh. Sa LGUs, meron tayong mga leagues ng ganito, ng mga treasurer at assessor. Meron tayong leagues ng mga MPDC. Meron tayong leagues ng mga disaster, uh, DRRMO. So, because magkakasama sila sa isang list, uy, meron din ganito, oh, talaga, ang galing, sana kami din, pag may budget si Mayor, ganun. 
So, minsan nagkukopyahan. Uh, yung example, yung uh, ABC sa medyo far flung na municipality para sa ganitong heavy equipment, ganito yung price niya. Ikaw na nasa andyan lang sa malapit lang sa city, yan din yung price mo, hindi mo kinakonsider. Bakit nga ba mahal sa kanya? Bakit sa akin susundin ko to? Eh, mas marami kang potential suppliers. Mas less ch- mas more chances na maraming magbibid sa iyo na hindi masyadong malayo yung travel. Bakit ka mangungupa? Iba yung considerations na iba mang considerations mo. 'Di ba? Although we get good ideas from them, we get good ideas from each other, but when it comes to the ABC, you have to have a market analysis and you have to watch back ito ha, mga back Bantayan nyo yung mga end users nyo kung ano nung pinaglalagay sa PR at PPMP. Akala, shopping list, no? no kung ano nung pinaglalagay. Ang tindi, minsan, ano pa, pati yung upuan, gamer's chair pa ang hinahanap. Bakit kailangan mo ng gamer's chair? Di ba pwede yung ordinaryong civil chair lang, office chair? Bakit kailangan yung gamer? Kasi ma, matagal akong nakaupo. Nagmamonitor ako, nag-include ako. Matagal din ako po, natural 8 hours binabayaran ng gobyerno sa iyo, kailangan mo ng gamer chair para diyan. So bantayan niyo yung mga pinagsasa- pinagsusulat nila sa PPMP ha. Baka lahat ng pinagsusulat sa PPMP ikarga niyo lang diretso sa APP. Baka kung ano-ano ang pinagsasabi nila sa PR nila, tanggapin niyo lang. Remember, hindi sila naku ang nakukulong. Kayo ang makukulong pag may makita yung kowa na mga unnecessary or overpricing. So yun, on behalf of the government, you should make sure to watch this money uh, um, properly. To spend this, no? Yung hindi kailangan, huwag. Kung kailangan naman, there should be a justification talaga. Kasi we cannot then compromise our the results of our work by always looking for the cheapest, no? Kung ano lang pwede. That in low, low, hinahanap natin na price where dapat it matches our requirement, our technical requirement. Kasi baka mamaya mababa yung presyo, hindi niya kaya yung hindi na nagmamat sa requirement natin. So it must not be disadvantageous lang. Yun lang talagang yung requirement. Hindi siya overpriced. Pag resort kayo. Yun lang. So, applicable penalty. Again, just like with RA9184. Next slide. Imprisonment plan for not less than 6 years and one day but not more than 15 years. Ito na naman yung non-probational na mga imprisonment. No? So, <clears> hindi <throat> talaga kahit sulat yan may, I remember during law school, may, ito talaga kaya tumatak ko sa isip ko, yung, yung per- criminal professor ko. That was... Ombudsman, uh, Deputy Ombudsman Virginia Palangka Santiago, if any of you know her, so she was my teacher in criminal law. <laughs> Ito talaga, mm. na, after two years, apply na siya. Di ba? Pero since my six years and one day, wala talaga. So yun, kaya tumatak sa akin yan, ako dapat pala pag magkamali ka yung hindi aabot ng six years and one day yung minimum penalty. Ay hindi, dapat di ka magkamali talaga. No? Kasi mahirap. One, kahit isang araw lang sa kulungan, mabaho pa rin. <laughs> so, Pag didikit yan sa katawan mo. So, perpetual disqualification from public office. Ito yung difference sa RA918 for RA3019. Sa RA918 for meron tayong temporary or perpetual disqualification from public office. But with RA3019, perpetual disqualification from public office talaga siya. No? Then, confiscation or forfeiture in favor of the government. This is the civil penalty then. No? Confiscation or forfeiture for any unexplained wealth manifestly out of proportion of this salary. So if marami kang racket, ilagay mo yan sa salain mo para hindi ma-question yung BM mo. No? Yan lang. Para hindi sabi na bigay yan ni ganito, bigay yan ni ganyan. Kasi maraming intrigera, lalo na yung mga naiingit. Hindi pumipikit yung mga naiingit. Huwag kayong umasa na pipikit lang sila. Pag-ingit, pikit. Hindi. Tinitingnan nila yung mga IG mo, IG ng anak mo. Yun. Uh, protest mechanism. Now we go to, tapos na tayo sa ano ang mga hindi mo dapat gawin. Yung mga offenses under RA9184 and RA 3019 So, we will proceed with the protest mechanism before we go with the blacklisting. So, ano yung, parang nag-exceed yata ako sa oras ko. So, protest mechanism, tayo. Anong gagawin 
Pag may isang bidder na hindi pabor sa desisyon ng BAC, lalo na pag na-disqualify siya. So decisions of the bids and awards committee at any procurement stage may be questioned by filing a request for reconsideration. It starts with a request for reconsideration. Ito lang talaga. When it comes to either motion for reconsideration, request for reconsideration, when there is the word reconsideration, it should be filed with the body or the officer who whose decision is supposed to be reconsidered. So kung decision ng BAC, ang request for reconsideration should be filed with the BAC. If, if decision ng hope during protest, then the motion for reconsideration should be filed with the hope. Why? Kasi it gives the officer or the collegial body a chance, an opportunity to correct itself if ever man may mali or hindi siya na-appreciate na evidence or may mali sa interpretation niya ng law. No? So when you say request for reconsideration, wala pong room dyan yung humane consideration. Hindi po siya pwedeng grounds for reconsidering your decision. It should be based on law and on facts. So when you say based on law and on facts, dapat Medyo mali lang kayo ng interpretation sa law, but later ay maliwanagan tayo, ay, dapat talaga ganito yung pag-interpret. Or based on facts, based on the records sa uh, back, or based on evidence presented. Yan lang siya, okay? So within three calendar days, upon receipt of the written notice, or upon verbal notification, for example, it is disqualification, then the aggrieved party, either the supplier or the contractor, perspective or yung na, dis na post disqualified either during the bid evaluation or during preliminary examination of eligibility during bid evaluation or during post qualification pag nalaman niya hindi siya pabor sa decision ng back he will file within three calendar days kasama saturday saturday and sunday sa bilang ha but if it falls on sunday it should be done on monday no yung end should be the monday the last day so Back with, uh, they should file the rec, uh, request for consideration with the back within three calendar days and the back within seven calendar days from receipt of the request for consideration shall make a resolution. Kasi, bakit natin sasabihin resolution, hindi decision? Because back is body. A little body, hindi siya isang tao lang. No? So, resolution, back resolution ang gagawin ng back. So, if RR is denied, Decision of the back may be protested in writing to the head of the procuring entity. So yung aggrieved party should not go directly to file protest. Dadaan siya sa RR and only after uh, dumaan sa request for reconsideration shall his protest be entertained subject to another set of condition again. No? So... So, so, makonsider natin na parang yung filing of protest to the hope is a form of appeal from the findings of the bank. So, yun yung second stage, second level ng uh, after the request for consideration, it's the protest. So, wala pong bayad ng request for reconsideration. Pero yung sa filing of protest po, kailangan na po siya verified at my protest fee na. So it must be in writing through a verified position paper accompanied by a payment of non-refundable protest fee to be paid in cash. Wala na po yung bid securing uh, BSBI, yung bid securing declaration. Pang bidding lang po yun. Pag protest fee po, dapat in cash yan. Hindi din letters of credit cash po talaga. And the certification against forum shopping. Baka mamaya kung marami-rami na din siyang pinafile. After ng decision ng request for consideration, dinimanda niya kaagad yung mga members ng box sa ombudsman. Tapos nag-file po siya ng protest sa, sa hope. Diba? So dapat may certification against forum shopping siya. Kasi in iniwasan niyang forum shopping, forum shopping na yan. Now, may isang body fully assuming, o may isang officer fully assuming that he has jurisdiction of the complaint, yun pala, may ibang body at officer na rin na nag-handle ng complaint, similar issue. So, yun yung iniiwasan dyan, na maraming para siyang, para siyang nagsa-shopping kung ano yung decision na favorable sa kanya. Di ba? Uh, it's a form of abusing the system. So, it's addressed to the hope. The verified position paper must be addressed to the hope. 
and filed within seven calendar days from the receipt of the decision of the back resolution. So, yeah, next. <clears throat> next slide. <laughs> so, yeah, a requirement on protest, verified position payment, uh, position paper, and payment of protest fee addressed to the home and filed within seven calendar days from the receipt of the back resolution. So, next page, I will show you a sample of a verified position paper. Uh, basic po siya. Ito yung makikita nyo yung parang uh, ipsom ganun yung parang sa ano na wala pang laman. Pero ito yung la nakalagay sa kanya. Bidder's name and office address. It should show the bidder's name and office address and the name of the project or contract. Kasi maraming contract or project minsan yung bidder, no? Especially LGU, sabay-sabay yan. So implementing office or procuring entity. Uh, brief statement of facts, issues to be resolved. Ano ba yung fact? Ano ba yung issue to be resolved? So, other matters and information pertinent and relevant to the proper resolution of the protest and certification against foreign shopping should be attached. Dapat may facts at yan at issues to be resolved. So, hindi pwede yung uh, protest at request for consideration ang hihingi lang ng awa. Hindi pwede yun. Kasi hindi naman based on facts yun. Based yun lang parang pinapadecide kayo based on your emotion. Parang magigilty pa kayo. Parang sinasabing hindi kayo mabait pag hindi ginagrant. Hindi naman to konti sinong mabait. No? It's appreciation of facts and issues that is to be resolved. So yung verified position paper nyo, dapat naka... Ano yung purpose ng verification? Kasi di ba yung verified... Yung mga position paper kasi... Minsan ginagawa na yan ng mga lawyers, company lawyers, especially if it's a corporation. No? They have their retainer lawyers. So, yung position paper nyo, it will just show that the affiant, yung pumirma, yung either yung authorized representative ng company or yung CEO mismo or yung sole entrepreneur, affiant has read and understood the contents na pinaglalagay niya dun sa reklamo niya. Allegations are in are true and correct based on personal knowledge or based on authentic records. Baka mamaya hindi niya alam pinagsasabi na ng lawyer. Baka mamaya copy-paste na si lawyer. Lahat ng protest niya sa lahat ng clients niya the same. Tapos you see, affiant, oh, hindi ko sinabi yan ha. Hindi, dito sa verified position paper mo eh. And you verified it. It means you have read it. You cannot deny anymore that this is your allegation. Oh, Uy, sinabi ko, ito yung reklamo ko. Eh, wala dito sa verified position paper mo. Ha, bakit? Eh, isa yan yung na-raise ko sa request for consideration. But it is not in your verified position paper. And in your verified position paper, you are supposed to have read and understood the contents of Pag hindi mo naisali, hindi yan kasama sa... Wala pong leap of court na po. Huwag kayong maniniwala. Pag, minsan, pag yung ibang lawyers yung gumagawa, baka mamaya... My motion for extension pa yun ha, tsaka leave of court to make, to, uh, to file amendment, eh hindi pwede yan sa atin. Simple lang. Simple lang yung procedure sa protest. No need to complicate with a lot. Kasi yung rules of court kasi, it's only supplitory pag hindi pinoprovide sa rules natin kung anong dapat gawin. Pero pag klaro sa rules natin, there's no point of applying the rules of court here. Because this is just an administrative process pa. No, this is just an administrative remedy. So, <coughs> so yan. And after, of course, my uh, next slide. Next slide pa. Yan. Next slide din pa. So, after, of course, na ma-resolve na yan ng ano, after ma-file yung protest, take note that when you file a pro uh, Balik po, balik po. Ah. Ah, yan. Take note that when the aggrieved party file a protest, it must be verified with certification against non-form shopping and there's payment of protest fee. Hindi po ibig sabihin niya na titigil na yung procurement process. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung mag award ng contract. Kaya we have to strictly observe with the periods provided by law. So they hope shall resolve the protest within seven calendar days from receipt thereof. Head of the back section shall furnish a copy of the, uh, furnish the bidder with a copy of the decision within seven, seven calendar days from receipt. So may mga periods na inoobserve para hindi ma-prolong yung, uh, hindi ma-delay yung whole procurement, uh, procurement stage, lahat ng procurement stages that will follow. 
So, resort to regular courts. Eh, pwede bang dumiretso after request for consideration if he's not happy or if after protest if he's not happy, pwede bang dumiretso si aggrieved party? Ang ganito lang yan. The request for consideration and the proper filing, proper filing of protest must be observed before any aggrieved party can proceed to the filing of petition for certiorari with the with, uh, with the regional trial courts under Rule 65. Kasi yung Rule 65 po, under the Revised Rules of Court, yan yung po yung tinatawag na um, petition for certiorari uh, for grave abuse, ang gawas po is grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. Ang didemanda po dyan yung buong opisina, yung procuring entity, especially the hope and the back, who they will allege as committing a grave abuse of discretion. Yeah. Among, pag wala po lahat yun, considered yun na hindi niya na-avail yung administrative remedies available to him. And that it could be a ground for the dismissal of his petition for certiorari. So yun yung i-observe nyo ha. You could make that as a defense pag ididiretso kayo sa regional trial court. Hindi po si ARTC po tayo kasi may hierarchy of course and RTCs are allowed to receive uh, petitions for certiorari. So start tayo sa RTC. So pag hindi po dumaan sa inyo for request for consideration or hindi po proper yung filing niya sa protest o wala talagang protest, this could be your uh, defense. Uh, failure to exhaust administrative remedies for the dismissal of any petition for certiorari filed against you. Okay? So, yan. May depensa kayo pag di yan dumaan sa inyo. Ito naman, next slide, yung protest fees. This is actually established since 2012. Hindi po kayo ang nagde-decide kung ano yung protest fee nyo. Just as the same na may yung GPPB Mayroon silang magkano dapat yung bid security, maximum and minimum. Pero ito po, fixed po siya. Hindi siya fixed na amount or fixed percentage, but rather, depending on the range of your ABC, your approved budget for the contract, magdidepende kung magkano dapat yung protest fee. I tried computing this one when I started with GPPB uh, lecturing, no? TSO. And actually, sa kung sakto talaga siya, walang, hindi mo masabi na unfair na yung 0.75% ng 50 million pesos, minsan mas malaki pa sa 500,000. Actually, mas mababa talaga siya sa 500,000. Just the same with the 0.5% of the 100 million is mas mababa kaysa sa 2.5 million. Okay? So, yun siya, um, protest fee. And if you cannot pay the protest fee, then there is no valid protest. There is no valid protest. But even if you pay the protest fee, it will not prescribe uh, no? uh, it will not prescribe anything. Hindi niya natutol whether you comply with the proper requirements of our protest will not toll the running of the period for the filing of protest and will not also toll the periods for the procurement, running of the procurement days, no? yung deadline. Ang di lang pwede is i-award yung notice of award. Okay? Ang purpose niya na dapat bayaran mo yan para maging valid yung protest mo. At kung hindi kahit hindi favorable yung decision ng hope sa'yo, especially sa aggrieved, I'm, 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 let's imagine I'm talking to the aggrieved party. At kahit hindi, val, hindi favorable yung decision ng hope for your protest, the aggrieved party can still proceed to the RTC. So, may knowledge check tayo before we end this session, before we proceed to the blacklisting guidelines. Uh, let's proceed to the next slide. Yes. Yan po, ma'am. We are now down to our last knowledge check for this topic. Again, participants, please choose the appropriate answer through the Zoom polling feature. The question is, the non-payment of the protest fee does not toll the prescriptive period for filing a protest and it becomes a justifiable basis for the hope not to entertain a protest. Is this statement true or false? For our participants, do you have questions related to the topic? You may ask our speaker by inputting them here in the Zoom chat box. Thank you.
All right, I think my majority of our participants have already answered the poll. Um, 95% of our participants have answered true. Is this the correct answer po? Well, I'm impressed because that is the correct answer. At least na siguro na-emphasize talaga, natanim talaga sa utak nila na uh, yung, non -pay, uh, yung payment of protest fee is a requirement. A non-payment will not uh, become a justifiable, a justifiable basis for the hope not to entertain a uh, protest. So yes, it's true. Payment of protest fee is an essential requirement for a protest to be valid. Without it, the hope will not entertain a protest and without it, it will not hold the prescriptive period for filing a protest. That's it. Thank you. So before I proceed to the blacklisting guidelines, I saw one question here which I could just answer anyway directly. So it's asked here, uh, regarding po sa liabilities, if ever may disallowance na mangyayari, kasama po ba sa po bang accountant and municipal treasurer sa liability? Ang masasabi ko lang, accountant should not have been part of the back. So, yung disallowance po, klaro naman po yan sa uh, disallowance po, sino yung liable. So, susundin nyo lang po yun talaga. Municipal treasurer, it is allowed kasi yung expenses. Um, kasi yung disallowance, hindi pa naman automatic penalty yan. Hindi pa yan yung penalty mismo. May kaso talaga para magkakuha ng penalty. Okay? And disallowed lang yan yung expense. So, and also, your accountant should not be included in your back. So, that's it lang. So, we will proceed with the Kasama po sila sa former Masa Bocho. Kasama sila sa ibang kaso, pero hindi sila kasama sa back. Kasama po sila sa ibang kaso natin. Maraming pwedeng ikaso, ha? Not only RA9184, but RA3019, uh, RA6713. And of course, meron tayo under revised penal code, falsification, malversation, direct bribery, and direct bribery, kahit ano pa. Maraming pwedeng kaso that will be involved in these procurement activities. So they have other liabilities. Yes. Yes, so next, all right. That, that ends our discussion proper for today's first learning session. That was Attorney Isaac Yal A. Nogra of the Department of the Interior and Local Government Regional Office 7. Again, thank you very much, ma'am, for leading an in depth discussion on protest remedy, protest, protest mechanism, and remedies. Of course, we would also like to thank our participants who have actively participated in our knowledge check questions at this juncture before we proceed to our second and final topic for today. Um, we will be having a short break and we will be presenting a short audiovisual presentation on government procurement. For questions, you may still drop them in our Zoom chat box and Facebook live comment section as our resource speaker shall be back again to answer this after the second session. Thank you po and see you in a short while. Have you ever wondered how sharing of issued blacklisting orders could be made easier for your agency? Well, with the Online Blacklisting Portal, or OBP, you are only one click away from posting and updating the status of your blacklisted entities and accessing information related to your agency's blacklisting history. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of the new OBP. To register, visit the link flashed on your screen. One registration per PE is allowed and only the official user can request for registration. After the successful registration, an alternate user can be added. Your registration will be validated upon receipt of the documents flashed on your screen. Within three days from the effectivity date of the BO, P 
OPPs should be able to post the BO by filling out the form in the OBP and uploading the copy of the approved BO. You can simply click on the Update Status tab from the Blacklisting Order Details screen. In case you need to change or update your account details, you may send a request to the email address flashed on your screen. For more details, you may visit the OBP homepage to access these files. Have you ever wondered how sharing of issued blacklisting orders could be made easier for your agency? Well, with the Online Blacklisting Portal, or OBP, you are only one click away from posting and updating the status of your blacklisted entities and accessing information related to your agency's blacklisting history. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of the new OBP. To register, visit the link flashed on your screen. One registration per PE is allowed and only the official user can request for registration. After the successful registration, an alternate user can be added. Your registration will be validated upon receipt of the documents flashed on your screen. Within three days from the effectivity date of the BO, PEs should be able to post the BO by filling out the form in the OBP and uploading the copy of the approved BO. You can simply click on the Update Status tab from the Blacklisting Order Details screen. In case you need to change or update your account details, you may send a request to the email address flashed on your screen. For more details, you may visit the OBP homepage to access these files. I hope everyone is back. Again, that was a short audiovisual presentation on the online blacklisting portal. For a more quick guide in government procurement and other related short videos and audiovisual presentation, you may visit our official website at www.gptv.gov.ph. At this juncture, we are now down to the second and final learning session of today's program. To discuss and share her expertise on blacklisting guidelines, once again, let us have our resource speaker, Attorney Isa Fial A. Nogra. Ma'am? Oh, sorry, I forgot I was muted. And performance security, depending on what's applicable, are also the prohibition to join any procuring entity through suspension, but also includes blacklisting. So it is discussed separately because there's another requirement also to be observed. So last na to ha, parang huling ano na to, huling... Let's give it our best. Coffee pa more. <laughs> so, the mode active uh, objectives of this. Again, we start with expectation setting um, for any discussion for the start of every module. So, for this black posting of the blacklisting order. So, manat gumi sa atin, medyo sanay na tayo. What are we gonna do for uh, the bidding, no? Bidding procedures, even negotiated uh, alternative modes of procedure. But when problems arise, we don't, most, a lot of banks are at loss how to proceed with it. Huh? Not only that, actually, even in the national government agencies, there's a lot of, anong gagawin natin? So, even mga sanay na na mga prospective bidders, they don't know. They just go directly to the courts or ask anybody parang uh, walang proper guide. And this is a perfect opportunity for us to understand what are the procedures to be observed, especially for blacklist ka. Kasi as I mentioned earlier, wala na po tayong geographical limitation when it comes to um, when it comes to be, uh, accepting bidders. And since wala tayong geographical limitations, 
if suspension, if may mga suspended or mga black, mga persons with hindi na maganda yung reputation nila uh, sa gawa nila, may mga questions na on the integrity of their work, could uh, pass up as still an eligible uh, bidder to other agencies in other provinces. So the good thing about this uh, blacklisting, unlike suspension where it only involves um, the procuring entity or agency concerned or the LGA concerned, the blacklisting affects the status of the uh, grieve, uh, of the of the prospective bidder or supplier, especially their eligibility to bid for projects even in other agency. So since it affects their status, it gives us, the government employee, the public officers entrusted with the procurement uh, activities, uh, more opportunity to check, no? Since mayroon na tayong uniform guidelines and portal, it gives us more opportunity to check who are these people we are dealing with. So this is very helpful for us. So the outline of the discussion is first the uniform guidelines. Next slide on blacklisting. So uniform na tayo, hindi na tayo from the procedures uh, to the inclusion and the portal and to the grounds. Um, same na lahat ng agencies, SUCs, LGUs, NGAs, GOCCs, same na tayo nang inoobserve na guidelines. So hindi na masabi na masyadong strict doon. If you encounter a prospective bidder who would say, oh, na-blacklist ako dun kasi ganun, ganyan, ganyan. Huwag kayong maniwala, syempre. Uniform naman ang guidelines. Eh. Um, they're just saying that to throw mud, mud no? sa um, nag-blacklist sa kanila. The fact is they're blacklisted and the guidelines have been followed. And uh, there's always a presumption of regularity in the performance of our duties. So... Anybody can throw mud at us, but for as long as we follow what's on the guidelines and the uniform guidelines, then it is presumed as a valid act, especially blacklisting them. It helps other agencies also to know who are these people. Then we will also discuss the blacklisting procedure. There are two blacklisting procedure stages we have to observe. No, One is blacklisting procedure during procurement stage. Na discover ka agad ano yung mga pinagagawa ng agree oh, ng, ng prospective bidder or contractor during procurement stage pa lang and blacklisting procedure during contract implementation stage. Maybe it is a ground that is committed during contract implementation stage or a ground that is committed uh, to secure the contract, meaning during procurement stage but was only discovered during contract implementation stage. So, dalawang procedure ang i-observe natin dyan. Kasi, there are more things to be considered, especially when the award, the contract has already been awarded, no? Unlike nung bidder pa lang. So, we will start with uniform guidelines and blacklisting. And there are two guidelines that is very, that are very important uh, for you to, to take notice of. And, I'm sure you will have a copy of this already. It is in the new, it is, I think it's part of the annexes. Uh, it will show you in your new copy of the downloadable po yan. Uh, please kindly visit, I'll mention this again, the GPPB website. There's a lot of downloadables there, especially the updated IRRs. Uh, just check the GPPB, www.gppb.gov.ph to get your updated downloads of the revised IRR and JPPB resolutions. So uniform guidelines and blacklisting, may, meron tayong JPPB resolution number 40, 2017, which took effect in 2018. This approves the revised uniform guidelines for blacklisting of manufacturers, suppliers, distributors, contractors, and consultants. So ito po yung nagsiset ng uniform guidelines ng blacklisting among all agencies. Wala na po tayong separate kanya-kanyang uh, guidelines. Baka sabihin nyo, ha? Ah, kasi, ano, merong sinet na guidelines yung sangguniaan namin, yung SB namin. Hindi, it should follow this. Why? You, see, you will argue that, but the sangguniaan bayan is a legislative body and 
JPPB resolution is just an issuance of an executive body. Please take note that under RA 9184, the JPPB was created with a policy making power. In fact, it can even amend or expand the requirements of RA 9184. And you say, because they are, it's a delegated power, just like how Sangunian legislative powers are delegated to you by the Congress through RA 7160 or local government code. Um, GPPB also has a delegated power through RA 9184. No? So uh, be wary of a possible conflict on your own guidelines to these approved revised uniform guidelines for blacklisting issued by the GPPB. So take note yan, kasi LGU kayo eh. Meron, unlike other agencies which has no power to legislate, uh, sa LGUs meron kayo. Baka mamaya, mas strict pa ang requirement nyo or mas lax. So titingnan nyo yan, hindi magko-contact ha. Kasi this is a power directly delegated. When it comes to procurement, this is delegated. About this RA918, I will say this. Again, RA 9184 is a very dynamic law. It's not static. Every procurement activity that is happening around the country, country is an opportunity to improve the whole procurement system. We learn from each other and GPPB learns from us as well and it, as it continues to grow and with policies. No? So that's why kaya sila na yung nag-revise, revise palagi. Hindi na dumadaan yung RA 9184 Kung makikita nyo, hindi na na-amend yan for a while. It's only the revised IRR. May IRRA pa tayo dati, di ba? So, huwag nyong kontrahin yung resolution ng GPPB through your own issuances. Baka mamaya si SB, mag, si Sanggunian, bantayan nyo si Sanggunian nyo, ha? Baka magpa-feeling, gaharangan yung mga project ni Mayor, mas matindi pa yung requirement. So, hope you can remind them with this. So it's the GPPB who approves the revised uniform guidelines for blacklisting of these manufacturer supplies, etc. Then we also have this GPPB resolution number 14, series of 2020, other agencies. So ito, yun. Diba? TWGs, if any TWGs are around here, this is a good reference for you to check if yung nasa omnibus form statement ng prospective bidder nyo na hindi siya blacklisted, totoo nga ba? Diba? I always say this to TWG, you can check online first kung yung tax clearance nila na issue na ba talaga, totoo ba yan? So, so PCAD nila, yung field jobs, you can check online even this blacklisting status. You can check that online. It's part, pag hindi nyo yan na-check and later on found out that they are, may mga May mga delays na, may mga losses na yung government because of that. And just because you failed to check on that, you can be fined liable for gross and excusable negligence causing undue injury to the government earlier as I mentioned. So, ingat tayo dyan. Tingnan natin yan. So, how, you different, how do you differentiate suspension and blacklisting again? <coughs> Next slide. Next time. Okay. So when you say blacklisting, it's an administrative penalty. No? It's an administrative penalty disqualifying a person or entity from participating in any government procurement for any for a given period. For a given period, it could be one year, two years, depende sa pang ilang offense na niya yan. So later, I will discuss how to treat these uh, periods. No? So, administrative penalty siya to disqualify a person or entity from participating in any government procurement, kahit anong agency pa yan, kahit anong klase pa yan. So, for example, meron siyang business of infra, meron din siyang in business of goods. Uh, affected na siya. No? Meron pala siyang hardware, tapos nagko-contractor din siya. Since he is a blacklisted person, then he cannot uh, bid for any government offices, for any government procurement for a given period. And that period is set. No? So blacklisted person or entity, it's a person or entity who was disqualified by an agency and, are, and or is included in the GPPB consolidated blacklisting report. So as I mentioned earlier, when you say person, it could be juridical, meaning created by law 
ay tibia, natural, created by your mama and your papa. So, so it could be a natural or juridical person, pero disqualified siya, meaning either he is directly involved in a previously unlawful act which, gi which gave him a blacklisted status, or he has a controlling interest, at least 20% of any juridical entity which is now bidding for a certain project. So pag kasali siya doon, either as a person, either sa sarili niya, or as a person with interest sa corporation, partnership, joint venture, or other enterprise, uh, na black, na we're in blacklist siya, yung status niya, madadala niya yun. Okay. At yung status din ng company, madadala niya. So, yun. <clears throat> now, we compare it with suspension. If blacklisting is an administrative penalty uh, disqualifying you to participate in any government procurement for a given period, suspension, however, is an interim penalty, meaning paunang penalty siya. Siya yung first to come before blacklisting. Interim penalty. Kasi nga, hindi naan madali yung whole procedure ng blacklisting. Pwedeng siya muna magsistart ta before yung blacklisting order ma-issue. So, interim penalties imposed for infractions committed by a bidder during the procurement stage whereby such bidder is prohibited from further participation in any of the breeding process of an agency. It shall be effective during the period of motion for reconsideration and or appeal and shall terminate only upon final decision by the hope or appellate authority. So yung suspension, uh, yung black listing is an administrative penalty, no? And it, it, it's even imposed during procurement stage or during contract implementation stage. Whereas suspension is an interim penalty at limited siya sa procuring entity lang yung effect. Hindi ka na makasasali, makakasali, makasasali or makakasali sa any procurement sa pro, can, to can, hindi ka, you cannot anywhere continue with the procurement activity where you are found uh, to have committed an infraction, no? And, <coughs> and also, pati sa ibang, ibang bidding process ng agency, kasi suspended ka nga dyan. While ongoing pa din yun, and that suspension remains to be imposed <coughs> kahit may motion for reconsideration ka pa, ano appeal, at mateterminate lang po yan pag you're, the decision, the hope will have a favorable decision uh, sa iyo. Yung may decision siya na favorable sa inyo, sa iyo. Hindi yung decision niya later, iba-blacklist ka na talaga. O so suspend ka talaga. So, what do you mean by appellate authority? Next stage. Kasi na may mention dito, na the decision ng hope or ng appellate authority. <clears throat> For us, national government agencies, we have regional PACs and provincial PACs we have our own appellate authority and that is the department level agencies that shall, uh, that is exercising general and administrative supervision and control over the blacklisting agency sa amin. <clears throat> sa inyo po, ito yung sasabihin ko ha, kasi applicable kasi ang when it comes to local government units, it's a local government code which defines who has supervision or control over you. There's no more control over you. Kasi nga, di ba meron tayong local autonomy and it is enshrined by the Constitution itself. Meron tayong local autonomy allowing you to have a separate administrative, political, and uh, corporate personality with, with the local government units from the local government units which is higher. Like for example, kahit barangay kayo, meron kayong separate uh, personality from the municipality. Kahit municipality kayo or cities kayo, mayroon kayong separate, component cities kayo, mayroon kayong separate personality from the from the province. So walang appellate authority si governor sa inyo when it comes to procurement decisions that your hope makes the mayor. At well, just the same way na wala rin uh, appellate authority ang um, ang munisipyo sa barangay when it comes to their decision as a procuring entity under RA 9184. Yeah, granted, there is a disciplinary power in local government code there provides a disciplinary power of the higher sangunian over you, but only if you are found uh, liable for grounds under Section 60. 
no? So, if ito, yung mga decision nyo, as a hope, as a back, hindi po siya kasali dito. Unless meron kang grave talaga na abuse. But since the, kung sasabihin natin, may procedure kasi na pinaprovide ang RA 9184, then this one shall follow. Kasi nga, special law at general law, when it comes to procurement, the special law that is to be followed is RA 9184 and not RA 7160. Okay? So, meron tayo dyan eh. Special law and general law. When it comes to procurement, the special law, which is supposed to be the controlling law, is RA 9184. And not just any provisions you can find in RA 7160. Just to, para lang makisali kayo sa mga, uh, para lang may mag, ano. So, sabi na, may mga procurement activities kayo sa municipality. Yung reklamo, umabot sa DILG. Remember, we only have a uh, overseeing powers before you. Supervisory, but not control. And wala kaming administrativeness provision na direct that we can change your uh, discretions, your decisions. No, we can't. We can only check and guide you. So, since walang sa LGUs, wala kayong appellate, walang may appellate authorities inyo, after ng decision ng BAC, after ng decision ng HOPE, then it stops, the BAC stops, stops from there. Okay? The buck stops from there. Hindi na pwedeng mag-continue siya na lahat na lang pupunta na kay congressman, pupunta na kay governor, pupunta na kay senator. No. It has to proceed to the process. Punta sa court kung gusto nila. But you, wala nang appellate authority na maghihintay kailan maging final executory yung suspension at blacklisting order niyo. So yun lang. You are not the same from us na may mga higher pa na ano. So, the listing. Let's go to the listing. No? So, removal, it's the remove, a process of removing the person or entity from the consolidated blacklisting report. So, a blacklisted person or entity shall be automatically delisted after the period for the penalty has elapsed. So, after one year or two years siya na blacklisted, kasi parang suspension din yun eh, one year or two years, depending pang ilang offense na niya yan. So, with blacklisting also, pag nasa consolidated blacklisting report na siya, nasa online blacklisted portal na siya, pag natapos na niya yan, i-automatic na siya i-delist. Ngayon, pag hindi yan na automatic delist, eh, sulatan nyo na yung GPPB para madelist na kayo. No? Pa, click na kayo dyan. Na click na sila dyan. Bakit yung problema? Hindi nyo problemahan yan. Problema nila yan. Kasi negosyo nila, apektado, hindi kayo. So, let them uh, follow also these rules. I'm sure some of them are also attending seminars like this. So, that's it, no? It's for the delisting. Now, let's go to the scope of blacklisting. Sino you know, ang blacklisted? Again, I mentioned earlier, it could be the individual, the natural person, or the juridical person such as partnerships, cooperatives, part, uh, joint venture consortium, and corporations. So, yung individuals are sole proprietors, kasama sa blacklisted yung mga spouses nila. No? Kasi meron tayong mga sharing of interest eh. So for partners, partners, partnership itself and its partners. The partnership itself is blacklisted and the partners are blacklisted. For the cooperatives, the cooperative itself is blacklisted and the members or board of director of the board of directors, the general manager or the chief executive officer is also blacklisted. For the partnership joint venture consortium, or has blacklist, blacklisted members and our partners as well as the person or entity who is a member of the blacklisted joint venture consortium. So kung yung consortium na yan, tatlo silang corporation, yung isa, blacklisted yung isang corporation, or may, yung isang blacklisted, yung isang corporation, meron siyang blacklisted person na may controlling interest sa kanya, kadamay-damay na yun. Okay? So our threshold for what we consider as controlling interest is 20% of the share, no? But for what is the uh, threshold din natin sa degree of relationships when it comes to single uh, stockholders, no? Or so entrepreneurs, are they like yung degree of consanguinity must be third civil degree of consanguinity or affinity under assignees. Yung assignees, for example, ay, blacklisted na ako. Sige, assign ko na lang sa'yo lahat ng mga rights ko. Ay, kasama na yan. 
Kasi nga, blacklisted siya. Yung inassign mo na right is blacklisted right. Plus, yung inassign mo na right sa iba, kasama doon yung status mo as blacklisted. Saka na siya makaka-bid uh, pag na wala na, yun, pag na-delist ka na sa blacklisted na status. So, yun lang yung tatandaan natin. 20% or thirds control interest or third civil degree of consanguinity or affinities under assignments. So, next would be knowledge check. May knowledge check na naman tayo. Yes, ma'am, for our first knowledge check for the blacklisting guidelines, again, all we have to do is choose the appropriate answer in the pop-up poll that shall be flashed in our screens. The question is, blacklisting is an interim penalty imposed for infractions committed by a contractor during the competitive bidding stage, whereby such contractor is prohibited from further participation in the bidding process of an agency. Is this statement? True or false? Again, blacklisting is an interim penalty imposed for infractions committed by contractor during the competitive bidding stage, whereby such contractor is prohibited from further participation in the bidding process of an agency. Is this statement true or false? We highly encourage our Zoom and Facebook Live participants to raise your questions all throughout the duration of this virtual activity using the Zoom chat box or the Facebook comments section. Please be reminded that only questions related to the learning session shall be accommodated by the resource speaker. So, may tricky kasi siya. <laughs> uh, sige. Let's answer that one. Ito na lang. Emphasize ka. Blacklisting is an interim penalty. Is it an interim penalty? Um, black. Wait, wait, wait. Nawala ako yung ano ko. Blacklisting is an interim penalty imposed for infractions committed by a contractor during competitive bidding stage whereby such contractor is prohibited from further participation in the bidding process of an agency. So, ang sagot ko dito ay ding da da ding <laughs> False. Kasi po, I understood, I understand where the confusion lies. In this paragraph, there's only one word which makes the difference, which makes it false. And that is the first word itself. Tayo, pag nagbabasa, dumidiretso tayo, di ba? So, blacklisting. The fact na ang pinalitan lang dyan is the blacklisting. It should have been suspension. Kasi ang titingnan natin, blacklisting is an administrative pen penalty. Whereas suspension is an interim penalty. Paunang penalty. Di ba? And another key word here is, sa blacklisting kasi, you are the blacklisted individual is prohibited from participating in the, the bidding process of any government agency. Whereas suspension, prohibited from further participation in the bidding process of an agency, the procuring entity itself. So pag procuring entity lang siya, hindi pwedeng makasali, at interim penalty pa yan, pauna pa lang yan, may to follow pa na bigger penalty, which is the blacklisting, that is suspension. Blacklisting, administrative penalty na siya, na affected na yung buong status ng uh, bidder or Thank you din po sa ating mga participants who answered the poll. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that is given. Um, the next would be, we will proceed uh, with the, after understanding what blacklisting is and what suspension is and who whether or not we have an appellate, who is the appellate authority, no? Uh, we will proceed with the requirements for blacklisting. So as earlier mentioned, there are two uh, stages where blacklisting could happen. One, during procurement stage. And the second one, during contract implementation stage. So yung procurement stage, ongoing pa lang, wala pang na-award na one nine. And for the filing of protest of any aggrieved party, kasi ang uh, magpapal ng protest, hindi naman yung nadi-disqualify lang, pati yung iba na may napapansin. Na? Or any motopropia grounds that the BAC have uh, observe disqualifying a 
prospective bidder contractor could also be the same ground for blacklisting during procurement stage. So among those, of course, we will have to repeat uh, these enumerations for your uh, para mag maemphasize sa inyo yung submission of eligibility requirements containing false information of our falsified documents. So kasama siya dun sa um, fraudulent practices. So another would be submission of bids that contain false information or falsified documents, not only eligibility requirements, but bids na daw, or the concealment of such information, concealment of such information on the bids in order to influence the outcome of eligibility screening or any other stage of the public bidding. Again, fraudulent acts. Then, Refusal to clarify or validate in writing its bids during post-qualification within a period of seven calendar days from receipt of the request for clarification. So this one, masasabi na, it could be an indicator that this is there is a collusive acts happening uh, behind the refusal to clarify or validate in writing the bid. No? So there might be something happening uh, behind the scenes. But could be an indicator for an unlawful practice. So allowing the use, eto, hindi to seemingly innocent, ha? allowing the use of one's name or using the name of the name of another for purpose of public bidding. Yan, mga fraudulent acts, misrepresentation of himself. And ito, withdrawal of bid or refusal to accept an award or enter into contract without justifiable cause after he has been adjudged as having submitted the lowest calculated responsive bid or the highest rated responsive bid. Earlier in the knowledge check, it has discussed the bana, yung withdrawal of bid without unjustifiable cause. Uh, yun lang yung considered as withdrawal. Uh, yun lang, any delay would be considered as withdrawal of bid. So eto, if there's a justifiable cause, then it cannot be a ground for blacklisting. There could be something that is happening in the company that's the reason why they have to withdraw. No? Pwedeng na, baka na-scam sila. <laughs> so, wala tayong magawa. Hindi na nila mamit yung obligations. No? Or there's really a sudden inflation sa supply na hindi na na-justify yung item nila, uh, yung offer nila. But it really requires a justifiable cost to be able to say na hindi siya ground for blacklisting. So another would be refusal or failure to post the required performance security within the prescribed time. So ayaw mag-post na performance security within prescribed time. So sali, ito dapat din ito may justifiable cost. Oh. Pero kahit naman with justifiable cost, they have their bid security. So pwede pa rin ma-forfeit. So all other acts that tend, ito talaga catch all. All other acts that tend to defeat the purpose of the competitive bidding. But any act they can commit that tends to defeat competition in the bidding process, such as, of course, habitually withdrawing from bidding or submitting late bids or patently insufficient bids for at least three times within a year, except for valid reasons. Except for valid reasons. Now, for example, right now, because of the emergency procurement, there are certain requirements for the eligibility that has been dispensed with, no? So, there are new, makikita natin, may mga nagbibid na ng mga new suppliers, walang masyadong experience sa pagbibid sa government. So, some of them, because they don't have the experience with the uh, government biddings, some of their proposals, parang kalat, uh, hindi siya organized, pati yung mga uh, hindi organized pati yung mga uh, in, uh, tab, tabings nila, tab sa mga folders nila. Magulo, kaya lagi sila na-disqualify. So, three times na sa within a year na-disqualify kasi hindi pa rin nila ma-organize yung mga bidding documents nila. It could be a ground for blacklisting unless they have a valid reason. no So, they have to, it's not your, it's not, incumbent upon you to present the valid reason, please take note, if they have valid reason or defenses, they will present it themselves. It's not you who's gonna present that, okay? Yung justifiable cost, yung valid reason, yung any defense of good faith. It's not for you, the back members, to present that for them. It is for them to present it for themselves, okay? Pag kasi kayo yung masyadong atat, 
i-justify sila. Parang may question dyan eh, bakit? <laughs> Di ba, bakit parang atat na atat kayo i-justify na may justifiable cause sila, may valid reason sila. Oh, di ba? So maki-question, bakit? Baka kayo yung ma-demanda ng ibang leaders na naiinggit. Pag in, in this, alam mo naman natin, pag pera yung involved, hindi pumipikit yung iba. Pag naiinggit, ay masyadong favored. Masyadong favored. Masyadong inaalagaan, dinipensahan. Baka kayo yung ma-demanda. Huwag masyadong mabait. Okay? So yun lang. All other acts, yan yung catch-all natin. Na de- which defeats competition, the principle of competition and bidding process. So, after the grounds, of course, there are sanctions for, ano mo yung blacklist din? <laughs> Bakit? So what? If ma-blacklist ako, anong meaning nun? So, aside from mag-forfeit yung bid security nyo, hindi din kayo makakasali sa procure, hindi din sila, hindi pala kayo, hindi din sila makakasali sa procurement activities ng Govern any government agency either for one year or two years. It depends if it's a first offense or second offense of their kind. May mga habitual offenders talaga. So with, this is without prejudice then. So meron pa yung mga bid securing declaration. I-enforce yan. So maraming conditions yung bid securing declaration eh. Mas mabigat, although hindi siya cash, mas mabigat yung mga conditions doon. So, may enforce yun. So, this blacklisting sanctions, this is without prejudice to the imposition of additional administrative sanctions as the internal rules of the agency may provide. So, yung suspension, of course, kasama na yun doon. Meron pa mga for features, di ba? So, hindi ibig sabihin hindi na, kami, hindi na sila ma-demanda pag na-blacklist na sila. Patuloy pa rin yun. Same, same. Administrative, civil, and penal. It goes on. So, it can continue. So, ano yung procedure na observe during blacklisting? So, it starts with the initiation of action. Next slide, please. So, you yourself, the back, let's start with the initiation of action. Who starts this, uh, who initiates this uh, blacklisting procedure? So, it could be any bidder or prospective bidder, any bidder na interesado, Uh, sa bidding na yan na nangyayari, na ongoing bidding na nangyayari. It could be your duly authorized observer if they are so sharp and they attended the activity. It so happened they they so, may mga nakikita silang mali. They could. Kunyari si authorized observer kasi hindi masyado nag-aten. Minsan lang nag-aten. Nagsisigarilyo sa labas. Narinig niya usapan ng dalawang bidder. Hindi siya kilala. Akala driver lang siya dyan na akala baka umpliado to kasi nakabarong din ng puti dito. Oh, hindi nila alam, observer na pala yun. Oh, may narinig. Pwede mo, reklamo. And you yourself, the back. Members of the back may motto proprio. May motto proprio. You mean by your own initiative, by itself, commence the proceedings upon prima facie on the surface uh, based on documents or based on your own determination of facts Uh, prima facie determination that the contractor as, as a bidder or prospective bidder has committed any of the grounds for blacklisting during the uh, competitive bidding stage. So, any sa inyo, ma-bidder, ma-back member, or ma-authorized observer can initiate the action. So, at your option, however, Unlike sa protest mechanism na sa request for consideration, there is no need to file a fee. Then there's no need to pay a fee, but only during protest, yung sa protest fee na before the hope. When it comes to blacklisting procedure, uh, at the option of the procuring entity, a reasonable fee may be required for initiating the blacklisting proceedings. No? Para lang sa pag-initiate, pwede kayong mag-provide uh, ng... Pero you can have Uh, like for example, the back may come up with a resolution for that, no setting a fee for blacklisting. Because it requires then a lot, no. Uh, remember, tayo po kasi sa back, we are we have honorarium. We receive honorariums for uh, all of this, but define na kasi ano yung task ng stages. Pag may mga blacklisting kasi nangyari, minsan we have to go and beyond. The usual, uh, you have to go beyond uh, the time we've been investigated, and there's also danger. 
sa part natin because we choose to investigate no, or to proceed with this. So this reasonable fee could help you cover for medical expenses to knock on the wood kung ano mangyari sa inyo. No? Kasi fund din yan ng bucket. So, after the, so who may initiate? Yun nga, yung bidder, authorized observer, or the back. The contractor shall refer, of course, sino ang posibleng pa-filean yan? Siyempre, the contractor, it shall refer to manufacturers, suppliers, distributors, contractors, and consultants. So, kasama yung consultants niyan. So, pag may natanggap na na uh, complaint dyan, a complaint has been filed already. The back shall notify the contractor in writing upon verification of existence of grounds. No? Pag nakita nila, oh, ano ba yung complaint? Tingtingnan ng back yan. Siyempre, hindi si Hupa dadaan lahat yung feedback. Kasi within bidding, uh, during bidding process pa to eh. So lahat ng everything that is happening during bidding process, may involvement dapat si back. Tanan ni back, ano ba yung complaint? Ano yung allegations? Pag makita niya na may existence yung grounds, oh, yung ito bawal to dapat, o ito bawal to dapat. Huwag mo sabihin na hindi totoo yan. Hindi, ikaw ba, hindi mo trabaho ang idepensa siya. Ikaw na magsabi kahit hindi mo pa nakikita yung ebidensya. Sasabihin mo na, ay, that's impossible. No. You're already defending the contractor on that part. You just have to look for the existence of grounds. Pag may allegations, pasok ba siya sa grounds? Hindi nyo titingnan kung totoo ba yung pinagsasabi sa complaint or hindi. Ha? Hindi pa yan yung stage na titingnan nyo totoo ba itong pinagsasabi? Hindi. Ang tinitingnan nyo lang kung yung allegations niya, pasok ba siya sa grounds for blacklisting? Pag pasok siya sa grounds for blacklisting, you, contract, uh, you shall notify the contractor in writing of the blacklisting a complaint filed against him, no? And then you shall ask him also if he desires to have a hearing to be conducted, if he requests one or not na lang. Answer na lang siya direct. So, kasi po, sa administrative kasi, uh, established na kasi yan yung, ano eh, yung, yung due process when it comes to administrative uh, processes, no? Uh, ang requirements sa, uh, requirements sa uh, due process, yung hearing, hindi yung the right to be heard when it comes to administrative process has already been complied by the fact uh, by the fact that the uh, complaint party is given the chance to be heard. Not necessarily through a hearing, during a hearing, but the fact that he can submit his position or his answer. Yan lang po yan sa administrative. It's cardinal rights po kasi yan sa administrative proceedings. No? So, not necessary na all the time may hearing. Hindi po to criminal case. So, the consequence of being, then dapat din sa notice niya with the contractors para sa para the contractor will have an idea of the gravity of the situation, he should be notified of the consequence if ma-suspend siya at ma-blacklist siya para hindi niya ignore Baka mamaya ignore niya, akala ano lang yan. Tapos later, pag may blacklist na, iiyak na siya na nang iyakan after. Kasi nga, he was duly notified of the complaint against him, the grounds, and then he was duly notified of his uh, rights to request for a hearing. Ano? He is even asked to, uh, to submit an answer, and he is even told of the consequence of being suspended or blacklisted. He cannot anymore claim that he was not duly notified. No? He is properly informed your contractor. So the contractor shall submit its written answer no within five calendar days from the notification of the back of the complaint against him then the contractor shall submit its written answer to back with documentary evidence and request for hearing if he so desires within five calendar days from receipt of notification so no motion for extension is allowed this is not a regular court and this is not the procedure here is not defined or defined by the revised rules of court where motion for extensions are allowed. So be wary of those retainer lawyers or contractors who keep on filing requests for extension. This is not the time for that kind of pleading. So, for this purpose, no? Ayan. Uh, 
may five days naman si contractor magsumasagot for this purpose multiple violations kung kunyari maraming ground na na-mention doon sa complaint uh, it shall be included in one complaint hindi separate complaint yung um, enumerations niya ng allegations niya andun lahat ng grounds na i-enumerate niya but it shall be considered as a separate offense once proven no so one complaint shall be treated as separate offense once proven. Lalo na pag marami talaga siyang offense, nagbabribe pa siya, nang harm pa siya sa iba, may collusion pa siya. So, these are grounds against him, both administrative and penal uh, offense. No? So, ito yung dalawang situation after sumagot, yung after manonotify ng back, yung contractor of the complaint for blacklisting for against him. So it's either sasagot siya, the contractor submits an answer, or he does not submit an answer. Next slide. So if the contractor does not submit ans an answer, what will happen? No. So if he does not submit an answer within five calendar days from the receipt of notification of the back, uh, of the complaint against him, then the back should automatically, ito automatic, ha? automatically recommends to the hope the suspension of the contractor and therefore feature of bid security. So what is automatic here? It is the recommendation of the back for the hope to suspend the contractor and forfeit the bid security. That is the automatic part as to whether or not the hope shall have to suspend the contractor or profit the bid security, it's not automatic. Ang automatic lang is recommendation of the back, but not the decision of the hope to suspend the contractor. Okay? My considerations pa yan. Kasi after 15 calendar days from the receipt of the back resolution recommending for the suspension of the contractor and therefore feature of bid security, the back, the hope, I mean the hope shall determine the existence of reasonable costs. Okay, whether or not to dismiss the case or issue a suspension order and forfeit the bid security. Suspension order kasi muna tayo, no? So after the back recommends to the hope the suspension, automatic yung recommendation kasi based yun sa existence of grounds. But for the hope, ang titignan niya is existence of reasonable costs. Uh, and reasonable cost to show that there is a high probability that indeed the contractor did this and that. Okay, so let's make a differentiation. The back, uh, after the filing of the complaint, only has to check if on the existence of grounds. You think nanya kung sa allegation, and jan yung mga grounds for blacklisting. Okay, if the, whole, if the contractor will not submit an answer, automatic yung recommendation niya to the hope for the suspension of the contractor and the forfeiture of the security. But the hope within 15 calendar days from the receipt of back resolution has to determine the existence of a reasonable cost. Titingnan niya if indeed based on the facts complained of, based on verifiable grounds, pwede possibly may high my existence ba of reasonable cause to believe that indeed the contractor could possibly have committed these offenses. No? So yun yung titingnan ng hope. He could dismiss the case. He could ignore the recommendation of the back. Although it is automatic for the back to make such recommendation, the hope is not, it is not automatic for him to suspend, uh, to issue the suspension order or forfeit the bid security. He can dismiss the uh, case if in if he finds that there is no existent there is no reasonable cost existing okay based on verifiable documents and facts so how about if the contractor submits an answer then the procedure will be different this time around it is not automatic for the bank to make such automatic recommendation no it is not anymore automatic for the bank to make such recommendation for the suspension of the contractor and forfeit the bid security. This time around, if the contractor submits an answer within five calendar days from the receipt of notification from the back, the back shall check first if there is a request for hearing or there is no request for hearing. 
Next, next po na slide tayo. So titingnan niya, una niyang titingnan, may request for hearing ba? Kasi if he so desires lang yun eh. Kung wala, then uh, if yes, then the back shall conduct a hearing. The hearing and the answer shall be the basis for the back to make uh, uh, to determine existence of fault. No? The result of the hearing and the position of the complainant in his answer shall be the basis of the back in determining existence of fault. But if there is no request for hearing, then the back shall only rely with the answer that has been submitted. Ayaw ko na ng hearing. Submit lang ako ng answer. Bahala na kayo. Diba? I mean, for me, that's, it's still the same. What's the purpose of the hearing? It's just grandstanding. You can pause or you can just, you can just uh, put everything, your answer there. This is an administrative procedure. Ano? This is not a criminal procedure. No? So, the back determines existence of fault pa rin. Through the, based on the complaint, based on the answer, and based on documentary evidences and facts that is verified, meaning based on records nyo. So, if yes, if yes, may nakita siya na existence of fault, then he goes back to the, uh, it goes back to the recommendation, back resolution recommending the suspension of the contractor and the forfeiture of bid security before forwarding it to the home. So, yan. After the bank makes such recommendation for suspension of the contractor and the forfeiture bid security within 15 calendar days, again, 15 calendar days is given to the home to determine, again, existence of reasonable cost. Kasi nga, ang hope may discretion din siyang separate from that of the back. Baka sabihin nyo, ang dami namang time, hindi ba pwede mag-rely na lang si Hope sa findings ni back? But you're given the chance to make your own discretion and your own findings. So you have to exercise that. So yes, you can rely if you believe that your back has already determined existence of fault during hearing and in the answer. But you can. You, uh, kasi nga, di ba, uh, it is given by the law. The power is given. The, you are the head of the procuring entity. You are the ultimate authority in your in your agency. So, nasa hindi pa ding, you are automatically bounded, bind, na automatically mababind kayo sa recommendations ng ba. It's just a recommendation in the first place. It's not yet the decision. Di ba? So, pag hindi pa yan decision, recommendation pa lang yan, it has a way you can give it a weight, but it's a, it doesn't necessarily bind you as a hope. Kung may mga hope na nakikinig dito, don't even, don't ever think, ha, na lahat ng decision na uh, nire-recommend ng mga box sa inyo, you are bind to that. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag-say no. You can still, based on reasonable grounds, you can still make your own determination. If you find that there is no existence of reasonable cause, then you can dismiss the case. If yes, then you shall issue a suspension order and for a feature of bid security. The notice of the decision, next slide, the hope shall furnish the suspended contractor a copy of the decision immediately after its promulgation. Next slide. So, ano po yung effect ng decision? No? So, the contra, next slide po. Sandali, parang naghahang yata sa akin. So, I'll take a break and drink water. Okay, so next slide tayo. Side effect po na decision. Next slide po. Okay, yan. So ano po yung effect ng decision na who to suspend the contractor and forfeit the bidding, the bid security? Automatic po yan, ipa-furnish yung suspended contractor a copy of decision immediately after its promulgation and the effect, contractor is immediately suspended upon receipt of the notice of the decision. The suspension shall remain in effect during the period of motion for reconsideration and appeal. And shall, balik po tayo ng one slide. Ayan. The suspension shall remain in effect during the period of motion for re Ay, mahina po boses ko. Okay na po ba? Yes, ma'am. Okay na po. 
Siguro kasi aminom ako ng tubig, nabawasan yung power. Baka iba yung tubig ko. <laughs> so, the suspension shall remain in effect during the period of motion for reconsideration and appeal and shall terminate only upon reversal of the decision by the hope or appellate authority. So, if it is not reversed, then the suspension shall continue either for one year or two years. And then, if no motion for reconsideration or appeal is filed, or if the decision has become final and executory after the lapse of seven calendar days from receipt of the notice of decision, the hope shall issue the blacklisting order to the contractor to follow na yung blacklisting order. Kasi nag-final and executory na yung decision after seven calendar days from receipt of the notice. Either notice of the original decision or notice of the resolution of the motion for reconsideration or appeal. No, if merong appeal. So, what if the contractor files a motion for reconsideration and appeal? No, nag-decide siya, file ako ng MR. So, and then, within three calendar days, he should file that. He should be able to file that within three calendar days from receipt of the notice of the decision. Next po, slide. Decision by the HOPE. So, yung decision po ni HOPE, ang imamotion for recon niya. Hindi po yung decision, yung resolution ni BAC. Kasi yung resolution ni BAC, it's just, it's not yet a decision, it's just a recommendation. Unlike the request for reconsideration and protest, yung sa mga isulta ng ano, yung request for reconsideration kasi, may decision kasi yung BAC, di ba, regarding procurement process. But when it comes to blacklisting procedure, hindi po decision yung sa BAC, recommendation lang po. Kaya hindi po nyo EMR yon. Ang EMR ng contractor is the res is the decision of the hope, no? Deciding uh the decision of the hope to suspend him, to suspend his, to forfeit his bid uh security and to issue his black and for and to avoid the issuance the auto uh, the issuance of blacklisting order muna. Kasi may issue talaga yung blacklisting order pag magpa-final and executory yan. So yung contractor, para hindi ma-issue yung blacklisting order, after he received the notice of decision uh, of his suspension and for feature, then he shall file within three calendar days his MR. So yung motion for recon, ipa-file niya before the hope. Kasi it's the, it's the hope's decision that he is asking to be ma-revert Resolve yung appeal within seven calendar days, then titingnan yun kung iga-grant o hindi. May appeal. Yes. Pero, sa inyo, hope issues blacklisting order ka agad. May appeal, pero hindi na-grant. O say, blacklisting order pa rin to follow. So, no, if it, is the, it is the decision to suspend that becomes final and secretary which results in the issuance of blacklisting order. Yung decision to suspend. Conversely, the blacklisting order contains, among others, the sanctions imposed on the airing contractor, such as the disqualification from participating in the bidding of all government projects. Kasama na yun doon. So, so one to the guidelines, uniform guidelines for blacklisting, the decision to suspend becomes final and secretory under the following instances. Titingnan nyo yan, if the bidder did not file a motion for recon, final na yan, and secretory within seven calendar days. If the bidder did not file a protest, yung sa kanina naman, protest after his motion for reconsideration has been denied, final na din yan after seven calendar days. If protest was filed and the same was denied, the decision becomes final secretary upon receipt by the agency and personal entity concerned of the decision on the protest. So, nagtataka kayo, bakit protest? Bakit hindi MR ang namimension? Kasi, there are grounds na similar, di ba? Titingnan nyo, there are grounds that similar for blacklisting and for the protest. So, yung protest naman, kanina lang, it's mo, it refers more to the acts during procurement. So, may mga grounds talaga na minsan hindi nakikita ka agad. So, kung gusto natin suspension order, same pa rin yun. So, they are all grounds for uh, administrative sanction. It's the same. So, when is the effectivity date of the Dali, nawala ako. So when is the effectivity date of the um, blacklisting order? Upon finality of the decision to suspend, it is incumbent upon the procuring entity to immediately order the blacklisting order, uh, immediately issue the blacklisting order, disqualifying the bidder from participating in the bidding of all government projects 
where the start date, nandun, when magsa-start yung blacklisting status niya, and completion of the sanction is stated. Kailan magtatapos? Dapat may period, no? Kasi doon, may bilang tayo ng one year, two years eh. Kung walang period, baka mamaya malito. Kailan? Oh, baka, baka yung one day na yun, mag-make yun ng difference kung makabid siya o hindi. ba diba? Sa iba na naman. Bibid pa sana ako, kaya lang nagkamali ng bilang. So, sayang naman, we have to be kind din eh, na kung tapos na niyang na-serve yung practicing niya, status niya, dapat he should be allowed already, right? So, tapos na niyang na-serve yung sentensya niya eh. So, which it may be either one year or two years. It's because the blacklisting order affects the eligibility of earring contractor in participation of all government procurement of, uh, opportunities. So, it is just fair. Although there is nothing uh, that says that it is mandatory that you have to go through. Kasi nga, di ba, kukulong na, napafine na, napafine, napoforfeit na, marami na napoforfeit, nagbabayad na siya ng damage, perpetually disqualified na siya. Lalo na pag may perpetual disqualification pa siya, it is incumbent for us to blacklist him. Well, blacklisting is still necessary because it may fa it will follow his, the, kasi hindi naman, di ba? Kasi it will follow the status of him, of the procure, of the contractor, the people involved with the procure, of the contractor, either as a juridical or natural, it's not the, So you can, it is incumbent upon the procuring entity. Kasi minsan, hindi alam ng ibang procuring and agencies na may mga naba, na, may mga questionable reputation pala to. If you keep silent, then they will continue to have business. And the more business they will get, even with their current financial difficulties, may nagka, nagka abiria abiria na pala yung mga projects nila, nagdo-domino effect na, the more loses it will, uh, it will, the government will incur, no? Maraming loses na incur yung government kasi nga because of your silence. So it is incumbent upon you to make proper action. Although hindi sinasabi naman the toy. So may a PA. Let's go to the knowledge check. May a procuring entity. <laughs> Ba't binabasa ko? Location <laughs> of the posted blacklisting orders. Yes or no? Kindly key in your answers in the Zoom chat box first. The first one, the answer with the proper naming convention shall be declared our knowledge check winner. So allow me to check our Zoom chat box. Uh, the first one from the Zoom chat box, the answer is from LGU Anau Tarlac, El Alvin A. Butay, and his answer is yes. Is this the correct answer, ma'am? Yes, actually, that's correct. You know, they deserve the prize for this question because it is not specifically discussed that indeed the PE can conduct, can conduct necessary modification of the posted blacklisting order. So, parang common sense din sa kanila no, na nakita nila, kailangan, baka nga naman kailangan talaga ng necessary modification. Kasi di ba, necessary modification could include the putting there the proper periods for the uh, proper period of the blacklisting order, yung start date, yung completion date, or yung uh, correction if first offense or second offense na pala sila, kailangan pala one year or two years pala. So those are considered necessary modifications which should be allowed. No? Kasi, uh, like for example, later I will discuss to you, yung mga blacklisting kasi, meron minsan nagsasapaw-sapaw na siya. May blacklisting order pala siya dito, may blacklisting order siya dito kasi rip habitual offender na pala siya. So, kailangan kasi i-adjust yung mga periods. Kasi may times na pwedeng uh, i-assume yung period ng blacklisting uh, sa isa. May times din na dapat i-serve na niya separately yun. So, there could be a necessary modification because of those periods. No? And so, that is why it should be allowed. It is considered as necessary modification. Okay, congratulations again to Mr. Alvin A. Butay from LGU Anau Tarlac. 
Our representative from our event secretariat shall get in touch with you to coordinate the sending of your prize. And I would also like to thank all our participants who answered. Nibale, wag po kayo malulungkot. Lahat naman po tayo ay baong learnings from participating in our knowledge checks. And also thank you for attorney for that explanation. Let us now proceed to the final part of our learning session. Yeah, now we proceed with the blacklisting during contract implementation stage. Hi, finally. Ito ang mas concern naman dito si Hope, no? So, saka yung mga members ng uh, project management team. Kung may mga, especially with uh, LGUs, I'm sure they have this project management or monitoring team. Or cancel. Minsan nga kasali pa yung mga taga-sanggunian dyan. So, I just like to mention, no? Wala lang, gusto ko lang sabihin. Parang ang sarap mag-ano ng seminar, no? Pag yung mga host natin, parang stewardess yun yung bosses. Lali na yung mga mahilig mag-travel, namimiss na natin yung bosses na mga stewardess. So, yun. Masarap pakinggan, no? Parang hindi tayo inaantok. Yung maganda yung bosses na mga nakaka naririnig natin. No? So, ito. Grounds for blacklisting during contract implementation stage. Ano naman yung mga grounds pag na-award na yung contract? So, ito na sa naman siya. Um, during contract implementation stage, yung failure of the contractor due solely to his fault or negligence to mobilize and start work or performance within the specified period in the notice to proceed. No? So, meron, tayo, meron siyang failure sa pag-start ng work to mobilize the work or performance within. Na, hindi na parang his own fault na hindi na mali ng LGU. For example, the LGU will have to prepare the law. We have to prepare certain things, the right of way, etc. Ready na lahat. Pero hindi pa rin nag-start ng work si contractor through his own fault or negligence. Or hindi niya na-estimate yung kailan siya dapat mag-prepare dyan. Kasi yung iba pala niyang give equipments na sa kabilang project site pa. O hindi na natin fault yan, LGU, ha? Fault na niya yan. So that could be a ground for blacklisting. Especially if uh, it causes uh, delay or injury to the LGU. Kasi may mga time is of the essence in a project, di ba? Like for example, our disaster and oh, mga, like ngayon sa COVID, yung mga site natin for uh, isolation. So those are times of the essence na yun, yung mga project na yun. Pag nag-delay yun, the government will suffer. Sabi nga dun sa uh, dump truck na nadaanan ko every time nagta-travel ako to North Cebu kasi tagaroon ako, sabi nga, uh, pro a government project do not delay, hindi <laughs> ba? Government project do not delay. O, applicable din yan dito. Government project do not delay. Oh. So, next would be failure by the contractor to fully and faithfully comply with its contractual obligations without valid cause. Or failure by the contractor to comply with any written lawful instruction of the procuring entity or its representative pursuant to the implementation of the contract. So, alam naman natin sa obligations and contracts, Kasama yun sa ano natin na may faithful compliance with your oblig uh, with your obligations. Pag walang failure of uh, uh, faithful compliance, unlike private contracts, we can just rescind immediately. But because government contracts are vested with public interest, marami tayong considerations, no? So, how does this, ano, ano yung mga lawful instructions naman that are na pwedeng mag pwedeng ma-include dito sa hindi na-comply. Di ba? Mga any written lawful instruction uh, pursuant to the implementation of the contract na hindi niya na-faithfully comply. Example with this would be for infra or consultancy, yung para sa infra and consultancy would be employment of competent technical personnel, competent engineers and our work supervisors. Yung sana sinasubmit nila na mga uh, eligibility forms, yung mga technical, yung mga docs nila, bidding docs nila, lahat, engineer, lahat, parang may ganitong number of years experience. Pero yung pagdating doon sa actual, hindi nakikita ni Anino, no? dapat may ganito. Ganito yung requirement, may mga ganito sa project manager, may ganito na mga iba-ibang mga position. Tapos pagdating pala doon, wala. 
no? Hindi pala same pinalitan na hindi alam ni LGU, na procuring entity. Then another would be the provisions of warning signs on barricades in accordance with approved plans and specifications, di ba? Kasi especially sa LGU, may mga daan tayo, biglang butas, ang daming na aksidente, hindi pala nila nilagay. Kahit hindi naman yan, naka, ano, dapat meron yan. Kasi it will put the constituents' lives to harm, in danger, pag wala yan mga signs and barricades na yan sa projects. And stockpiling in proper places of all materials and removal from project sites of waste and excess materials. Pagkatapos ng project, lumayas lang. Binayaran din nyo, nyo din kasi kaagad. So, dapat kasama yon yung paglilinis nila sa project site, no? Tapos yung <coughs> mga hinuhukay nila, hindi man lang na hindi man lang na alis sa paglalagyan. Ano bang kontrata agreement nyo? Anong gagawin nyo sa mga hinukay niya dyan? Yung mga binakbak na semento, ano bang gagawin dyan? Baka iniiwan lang dyan. So, yan. Kasama yan dapat sa mga ma- Uh, if faithfully comply nila, hindi yung laya sila kagad kasi ando na naman sila sa ibang project. Then another would be, of course, deployment of uh, committed equipment, facilities, support staff. And, di ba kasi may mga list sila ng equipments na, i, na i-mobilize or i, i, ilalagay dyan sa project site. Sabi, may ganitong mga ganitong equip equipment, may mga grader, may mga piston, may kung ano-ano pa. Pero wala naman. Kasi di ba, alam naman natin, contractors, they don't actually own all those equipments. They are rented. And some of the contractors have been handling multiple projects and they could not anymore. Uh, some of them are over leveraged. So yun, responsibility nyo din yun. Tingnan nyo maigi yung NFCC. Was it properly computed? Baka may mga itinatago na projects na para uh, hindi makikita na hindi na pala over leverage na pala sila. Sino yung nakakabasa sa inyo ng law on leverage by Robert Kiyosaki? Yeah. So, yung law on leverage parang inverted na siya. Sobra-sobra na yung uh, obligations niya. Hindi na niya kaya. So, yung mga equipments niya, facilities niya, staff at manpower niya, hindi na nakakaya yung number of projects na nakomodate niya. Nag-failure na siya to deploy. No? Sabi nga ni Frank Sinatra, I beat more than I could chew. So, yun yung nangyayari kay contractor. So, kumain siya ng sobra, nasusuka na siya. So, kaya titingnan niyo din kasi ground for blacklisting yun. Kasi, because of his over leverage status na hindi na niya mamimit faithfully yung contractual obligations niya with you. So, wag masyadong generous kasi kilala ko naman yung mayor doon. Oo, oh, sabi nga ni mayor doon na ano, hindi pa sila tapos doon. Find the reason why. Bakit hindi siya natapos doon? Baka di na delay din siya dahil sa iba ring project. So, don't be too nice and too generous in understanding them. If the failure is already because of their own fault. Sobra-sobra, swapang masyado lahat ng project kinakain, hindi na nami, hindi na nag-giveaway sa iba. Lahat na lang kinakanya na, yun pala hindi niya kaya. It could have been given to another contractor, contractor who could better give, uh, who could better do the project. No? So renewal effectivity dates of the performance, ito, request ng request ng extend, hindi naman pala in-extend yung performance security niya. Ginagrant niyo, bait, bait niyo, ma'am, sir, hindi ko matatapos. O, ginagrant niyo. Pero yung, basic, yung performance security niya, case, case, hindi niyo na-inspect, hindi niyo tinitingnan, hindi rin niya in-extend. Eh, nung nagbigyan, nag-abscond na lang siya, na wala na siya, naglaho, parang bula, parang mermaid. So, ano nangyari? Wala kayong mahabol na performance security. No? So, ano na lang gawin niyo? Option niyo na na, i-blacklist niyo na lang siya. No? So, yun yung pwedeng option yun na lang kasi hindi nyo na nahabol. So, yun, it's a, why is it a ground for blacklisting? Because it shows his bad faith. No? It shows his bad faith na he's not really uh, faithfully complying with his contractual obligation. He is not extend, he is not uh, performing with good faith. No? Alam na niya anong kulang niya, patuloy pa rin. So assignment and subcontracting, another also ground for blacklisting would be assignment and subcontracting of the contract. Or nawala yata tayo. Nalit.
Nawala yung screen sharing. Okay. Yan. Another brown also for blacklisting. Oh my God, it's only 10 minutes left. So, uh, it would be assignment and subcontracting of the contract or any part thereof or substitution of key personal name in the proposal without prior written approval by the PE. Subcontracting is not entirely prohibited, but what is prohibited is when you for the procurement of goods and satisfactory progress in the delivery of the goods by the manufacturer, supplier, distributor arising from his fault or negligence and or unsatisfactory or inferior quality of goods as may be provided in the contract. Ito yung unsatisfactory quality of goods. Tingnan nyo lang, minsan hindi kayo contento, may nakikita kayo mga defects, ibabalik yan sa kanila kasi hindi nyo tinanggap during inspection, hindi nakapasa. For as long as hindi pa siya lagpas sa performance delivery niya, yung delivery date. Kasi the performance of the contract is during the period of delivery. And the delivery date is the one that is set. So kung advance siya nag-deliver sa inyo, but later on you found that this inferior quality, he could still change that and you cannot charge him uh, for anything kasi may period pa naman siya to make proper changes. But if lagpas na siya sa delivery period niya, uh, of course, other than the liquidated damages, if lagpas na siya sa period niya to make necessary replacement of an acceptable quality uh, acceptable quality of goods, then pwede yung grounds for blacklisting sa kanya. Okay? So for the procurement of consulting services, naman, poor performance by the consultant of the services arising from his fault or negligence. Let's be clear here. Consultants do not enjoy employer-employee relationship with a contract uh, with the procuring entity in fact you may just set the times where he should come to the office to make necessary reporting or supervise supervision or or <clears throat> other functions he could do but he is not it is not necessary for him to time in time out unless you require it and he agrees with it no but since there's no employer employee relationship he could just come anytime. And that's where the problem arises. Because of that, a lot of consultants have been reported to deliver poor performance or have not delivered at all. So yung iba, hindi na deliver yung mga required deliverables nila. Yung designs, plans, or whatever, hindi na deliver. It happened to a lot of local government units. Di ba, meron tayong mga plans na that is, especially sa disaster, we are as for consultants and that, or pag may mga build and design tayo, we also require consultants for that, hindi naka-deliver on time. It's considered a poor performance. Hindi na nga pinag-report, hindi pa nagpakita, wala pang na isubmit by the time the contract ends. Na? So, yun. So, any of the following acts by consultants shall be construed as poor performance based on ma mga nangyayari sa mga ibang procuring entities, may mga na nakikitang examples ng poor performance, such as, of course, defective design, you know, resulting in substantial corrective works in designs and our construction. Hindi maganda yung design niya, naka-incur pa na expenses in procuring entity to make necessary correction. Kasi nung sinunod, weak pala. Biglang umupo yung nakatayo na, no, na mga buildings, bigla ay Yan lang, isang ihip ng hangin. Hmm. So another is failure to deliver critical outputs due to consultant's fault or negligence. Lagi na lang extend na extend. I remember, nabasa, narinig ko yung balita regarding a wedding planner na hindi na tinakbo yung pera. So yun yung example, parang ganun lang siya na consultant. Kinuha niya yung pera, hindi siya nakadeliver, walang pagkain yung mga bisita. So parang ganun yun. Kinuha lang yung bayad ng consultant, wala namang na-deliver na plans, walang na-deliver na designs, tinatank you lang kayo. No? Then specifying materials, kaya nga, uh, <clears throat> one thing you notice in the determination of the uh, winning bidder for consultants, it's always HRRB, not HRB. So not anymore the calculate, calculated, but the highest rated. My performance, tinitingnan yung performance nila if they have the uh, potential to 
possibly meet the requirements. I'm please bear with me kasi medyo mahaba ba talaga. Uh, konti na lang, konti na lang tayo. Nasa mga last eight slides na lang tayo. Then of course, allowing defective worksmanship or works by the contracting being supervised by the consultant. Siya yung supervisor. Hindi siya nakikita naman dun sa project site. Kaya tuloy na ilusot yung mga matikiit na mga iron rods, no? So, yun. How about for the contractor naman sa infa? Infra, yung mga negative sleep page, like 15% of the critical path of the project. So you have a Gantt chart for infra projects. And in fact, payments should be made in accordance with the progress report. Diba? So, huwag niyo bayan. Uh, hindi pwedeng, kaya nga hindi kayo in-encourage na bayaran ka agad lahat kahit tinitingnan niya dapat yung progress report. Kasi pag may sleep page na nakikita niya na, nag-accumulate niya niya. Eh. Nagbabacktrack na sila. So, Pag nakikita nyo na may slippage na sila, i-ask nyo na din. Pwede na kayo na lang din mag-ask kayo sa kanila if they plan to request for extension. Do not wait for the term to expire. Ha? Kasi pa, ano i-extend kung nag-expire na yung period ng performance obligation? Pag nakikita nyo may delay na, uh, you ask them already for how to, how can they come up with a plan to be able to Ano? May term dyan eh. Hindi lang ako masyad makalimutan ko. Basta yun. At tapos, i-request na din na yung extension if necessary. Okay? So, quality of materials and workmanship. And then, specification. It must be in accordance with the specifications. If not, it's one for blacklisting. Of course, willful or deliberate abandonment. Maraming nangyayari dito. Nawawala na lang si contractor. Isang tao na lang naiwan. Nawala pa. So, if for deliberate abandonment or non, next slide please, or non-performance of the project or contract by the contractor. So in case it's determined prima facie that the contractor has engaged before ito na yung number eight, yung mga late discovers. In case it is determined prima facie that the contractor has engaged before or during implementation of the contract in unlawful deeds and behaviors relative to the contract acquisition, yung pag-start pa lang yung pag-bid pa lang niya and implementation as enumerated and the guidance of termination of contracts. Ito dito nyo pwede ipasit yung later kahit meron na uh, before or during the implementation of the contract may mga unlawful deeds pa lang, pa lang siya. For example, may mga collusive practices that were discovered later on then that could also be a ground for blacklisting even during contract implementation stage. So, this time, because during contract implementation stage, and it is the hope's higher, highest responsibility to take uh, uh, action on this. The back is not anymore involved in this. So sanctions for blacklisting during contract implementation stage. It's first performance security for future. Next slide, please. Ah, uh, yan. Ipo forfeit nyo. Wala nang bid security. So yung performance security naman ipo forfeit nyo. Kaya it's very important for you. Kaya nga yung performance security, it's very important na walang notice to proceed pag walang performance security. Okay? The contract and the performance, posting performance security must come first before the notice to proceed. Okay? So first offense for blacklisting and second offense, just like suspension, it's one year and two years. So without this is also without prejudice to the imposition of additional administrative sanctions as the initial as the internal rules of the agency may provide and are further criminal prosecution. So, yan, yan. It does not preclude further criminal prosecution. Lahat pwedeng sabay-sabay. So, ano naman yung procedure if blacklisting ha procedure happens during contract implementation stage? Mas shorter siya, okay? It consists only of three, three stages. The notice of blacklisting, the show cause, show cause, order and the decision. Kasi this time, it's just the hope who is at the helm of this uh, procedure. So upon termination of contract due to default or unlawful acts of the contractor, the ish hope shall issue within seven calendar days a blacklisting order. Terminate na kasi wala na nga, di ba? Tumakbo na. So where contract termination is no longer possible, but the contractor committed acts or causes which may constitute grounds for blacklisting, the implementing unit shall within seven calendar days after the lapse of project duration after the lapse of project duration, take note, cause the execution of a verified report. Itong verified report, pwede gawin niya ng project monitoring team niya, no? Kasi if the project monitoring team has done its job, they could have already uh, foresaw 
it happening o oh, makang may delay na oy parang unti-unti nang nawawala yung tao parang hindi na dumating yung mga ganitong materials at equipments so they could have foreseen that already may mga uh, interventions pang mangyari pero if since wala na tayong magawa kasi hindi na nga possible yung termination sa contract so gawa na lang ng verified report with all relevant evidence attached subject to the following this following procedure first the note issuance of notice of blacklisting then upon recommendation by the implementing unit uh, then it's either sino yung end user sa LGUs usually it's the municipal engineer's office no uh, pag mga infra so mga disaster naman the MMDRMO marami naman kasi di ba kasi it could be also goods not only not only infra it could also be um consultancy not only in front goods so yung implementing unit the sa atin magagamit natin parang end user na din no they hope shall initiate the blacklisting procedures by the written notice to the contractor with the following information next po tayo na slide a statement ano ang nakalagay sa notice of blacklisting first a statement of the acts next slide po a statement of the acts that constitute the grounds for blacklisting. Ano yung mga nagawa na mali or offense ni contractor? Statement of facts po ito, yung acts. Hindi po yan statement of allegation facts. Ano ang actual na nangyayari? Hindi yan, hindi yan, dinidita, yung acts po yan, actual po yan ha? Anong nangyayari sa site, project site, if ever it's an impact. So an instruction to the, yung supply, yung supply officer din, siya din yung in-charge, especially pag goods, no? hindi na-deliver, ganito, kasi ganyan, dapat ganito, ganyan. So, an instruction to the contractor to show cause why he should not be blacklisted. Oh, sige, an contractor, sumagot ka, bakit hindi kita iba blacklist? So, special instructions of the PE, the procurement, the if any. So, the notice of blacklisting shall be accompanied by a copy of the verified report. Yung verified report ng implementing unit, it could be the end user, it could be the supply officer, it could be the it could be the project monitoring team, as long as they are representative of the implementing implementing unit. So, yun yung mag attach ng, uh, ng hope sa notice of blacklisting niya, yung verified report. So, the show cause that will be submitted by the uh, contractor. Sorry, I have a call. I have to recheck one. So, the show cost shall be within a period of seven calendar days. Masubmit yan. Ah, within a period of seven calendar days from the receipt of the notice of blacklisting, the contractor shall submit to the hope a verified position paper stating why it should not be blacklisted. Ito yung cost na sasabihin niya. Bakit hindi po ako iba-blacklist? Baka may bad justifiable cost na siya. Baka nga, di ba, yung may mali, yung may kulang, hindi naka-prepare, isang LGU. Kasi may mga times din naman talaga na may mga required din actions from the LGU, right? So if the contractor fails to show cost, either by, in his answer, wala siyang na-point out, na justifiable reason or hindi talaga siya sumagot after the lapse of seven day period either by inaction or by default the hope shall issue a blacklisting order so pa follow na yung blacklisting order direct so wala po nang hindi na po to dadaan sa suspension unlike the blacklisting procedure during bidding procedure no Yung sa isang blacklisting procedure during bidding procedure, may suspension but for feature of bid security before yung uh, blacklisting order. Pero dito po sa uh, blacklisting during contract implementation stage, diretso na tayo for features of performance security at blacklisting order pag hindi makasyo cost yung contractor. So decision within a non Within a non-extendable period of 10 calendar days from the receipt of the verified position paper, the verified position paper of the contractor, the hope shall decide whether or not to blacklist the contractor. Kung may, kung may, ano siya, kung may sagot ba talaga siya, why he should not be blacklisted? May reasonable ground siya. So they hope by in his discretion shall decide whether or not to blacklist the contractor. It shall serve a written notice to the contractor of his decision 
which shall become final and secretary after the lapse of seven calendar days from the receipt of the notice of decision. So, yeah, black, black list order na diretso kagad yung AS ni Hope. Hindi na suspension order. No? Kasi yung sa isa, issue mo na siya ng suspension order. May motion for recon pa, may appeal pa. May seven, may ano period pa sa pag ma-final secretary na yung suspension order, saka pa lang ma-issue yung blacklisting order. But in this case, during contract implementation stage na blacklisting procedure, diretso na po yan yung blacklisting order. So what does blacklisting order? When does blacklisting order become final secretary? Okay. You can provide for this if the bidder did not file a motion for consideration decision to suspend yung sa first na uh, klase ng blacklisting. Uh, said decision becomes final secretary after the lapse of seven calendar days counted from the notice of decision. But if the bidder did not file an appeal after his after uh, blacklisting order is issued before NOAA, yung tapos na yung uh, procurement process. So, pag before issuance of blacklisting, before issuance of blacklisting order, ano ang status ng blacklisted person or entity. The earned contractor may participate in the procurement of any government project except in the agency where he is suspended. Kasi suspension pa lang yun, di ba? Yung sa bidding procedures na blacklisting uh, blacklisting procedures. At first, dadaan mo na siya sa suspension order. Hindi na siya pwede makasali sa procurements ng same agency. But he can still join in other agencies. But however, if a blacklisting order has already been issued, then we have to distinguish whether or not it is issued before NOAA, meaning during procurement. Uh, it's a blacklisting order issued during procurement proceedings, during bid procurement, or it's a blacklisting order issued after NOAA, meaning during contract implementation stage. So we'll go first with the issued before NOAA. So the blacklisted person entity shall not be qualified for award and such project or contract shall be awarded to another bidder. Hindi na siya ma-awarda ng contract na yan. No? Uh, kahit siya pa yung lowest calculated and responsive bidder, sana. So how about if the blacklisted order is issued after NOAA? The award or awarded, na, awarded na, na project or contract shall not be prejudiced. The general rule, it shall not be prejudiced by the said order unless... The said offense is or not connected uh, only unless is connected with the awarded project or contract. Meaning, if the offenses is or not is found to be connected with the awarded project or contract, kunyari, yung grounds ng blacklisting order was actually uh, committed before. Uh, committed during bidding procedure, only it was found out while during contract implementation stage, then the contract shall be prejudiced. No? Pero pag after yung grounds for blacklisting niya during contract implementation stage, yung offense niya connected to the project, magdidepend na yun if pwede pang i-terminate ang contract or hindi na. Kasi di ba, meron na tayong tapusin na or terminate na yan kasi wala na talaga. Just like earlier discussed, no? So, ito yan siya. Upon termination of the contract, uh, if contract termination is no longer possible or if a contract termination is still possible. So, pag possible pa yung contract termination, i-resend na yan, tapos ibibigay na niya, i-ano niya na sa iba. Ipaprocess na yung pag-assume ng iba. So, ano ka, paano natin i-apply uh, yung penalty? Kasi some of the, kasi nga diba, while they are still suspended and the blacklisting order has not yet been issued because of the existence of a motion for reconsideration or appeal. Pwede pa kasing nakabid sila sa iba tapos for whatever reason, nasuspend na naman sila at nabablacklist na naman sila. Medyo notorious din talaga to si contractor, no? So in case the penalty of blacklisting for two years is imposed during the pendency of a previous blacklisting order, the latter shall be deemed terminated. Yung nauna, tapos na yun at isubsume na yung two-year, bagong two-year blacklisting. So dadagdag na lang yun. Ha? Yung, if yung una niyang two years, tapos may bago na, Idadagdag na yan. However, if an offense is committed already for the third time, third time or oftener na siya na ba blacklist, meaning 
Lagi na lang siya nabablacklist. The penalty applicable child still be blacklisting for two years. Lahat na yan, isa-serve na yan niya. Wala nang isa-subsume na ito terminate na blacklisting period at isa-subsume na lang ng bagong blacklisting order. Lahat ng two-year uh, blacklisting order na nakuha niya sa lahat ng galit na LGU sa kanya, isa-serve niya lahat yan. Okay? So, three years, six years na yan. Four years, eight years na yan. And that should serve him a lesson, no? Uh, kaya nga, yung blacklisting, pinakaayaw nila yan. Okay lang sa kanila masuspend kasi hindi lang tasasali sa inyo. Pwede pa sa iba. Pero pag nabablacklist kasi sa it affects negosya, profits. We know businessmen, they're all for profits. Kaya nga sila kung ano-anong pinagagawa because they want to uh, earn profits, right? So, this is really an intense. It, this is really a grave penalty for them. More than sa kulong. Kasi kung makulong sila, pwede pang tuloy yung negosyo. Pero pag ma-blacklist sila, wala na, di ba? Hanap sa uli na ibang negosyo. So, blacklisting order form. Next uh, slide. This is the uh, form that should not be... Please don't modify this one. This is the standard blacklisting order form. I should buy the... Uh, created by the GPPB and issued through GPPB Circular Number 03, Year 2020. It's one of the downloadable forms in GPPB website. Huh? And dyan yan, ang link, https www.gppb.gov. That is downloadable forms, BO forms. So yun yung hida-download nyo. Huwag kayong gumawa ng sarili nyo ha. Kasi they require all the information that is needed there for the online portal. No? Kasi baka may pag gumagawa ka na sarili nyo, may mawala, tatawagan pa kayo, di ba? So, kailangan nila lahat ng information dyan for the portal. And it makes it easy also for them to up, to upload and encode everything. Kasi series na yan eh. Oo. So, huwag yun. So, the blacklisting order, yan yung nakalagay talaga yung sa blacklist order department office order or board resolution number complete register business name address and field jobs registration number of the blacklisted person or entity the license number if applicable kunyari mga pickup nila or kung ano-ano pa so authorized managing officer the name kasi yung liability di ba kasi yung blacklisted order status nagpa-follow sa individual nagpa-follow sa next nila na iba nilang negosyo so name of project contract and location amount specify specific grounds or offenses committed sanctions imposed and its specific duration ito yung sa blacklisting order kaya nga pwede allow tayo to make necessary modifications kasi pwede kasi may mga kulang-kulang dito no so especially yung start and end dates, it's very important yung start and end dates. Kasi it's just like sa kulong, kailangan din malaman kailan siya na-commit to prison at kailan siya lalabas. So date of issuance of the order to blacklist. So we have this knowledge check already. This, is, this will be our last knowledge check for the day and for your batch. Yes, ma'am, for our last knowledge check for this activity, the question is, when does blacklisting order become final and executory? Is it A, if the bidder did not file an MR on the decision to suspend, the decision becomes a final and executory after the lapse of seven days counted from the receipt of the notice of the decision? B, if the bidder did not file a protest after his MR has been denied, the decision becomes final and executory after the lapse of seven days counted from the receipt of the resolution on the motion for reconsideration. C. If a protest was filed and the same was denied, the decision becomes final and executory upon receipt by the agency and person or entity concerned of the decision on the protest or letter D, all of the above. Again, if, if you have questions related to the topic, please do not hesitate to chat them in the Zoom chat box. Thank you.
So yeah. Ma'am, I think we already have a sufficient number of participants who have inputted their answers in the Zoom poll and they have answered letter D, all of the above. Is that the correct answer, ma'am? Yes, that's correct. Actually, this is already a recap no, of your... Parang this question like serves as a recap on the fin final, uh, finality of every decision. So yes, all of the above, yeah. And it's a good thing a lot of people are able to answer that. Uh, there's one question that is raised here. Can I answer this one already? Uh, Ma'am, we will be answering the questions during the open forum. Po. Um, uh, would I also ask if you would like to take a break after this or tuloy tuloy na po tayo, Ma'am? Parang lagpas na, lagpas na ako sa oras. <laughs> Pero yung iba, baka ano na, baka na wiwiwi na din sila. Uh, may I know from the participants if you'd like to proceed with the open forum or should we take a five-minute break? You may chat your answers in the Zoom chat box. <laughs> okay. Okay. From the participants, mas okay po sa kanila na proceed na po tayo with the open forum. Lagpas na eh. Okay po, ma'am. All right, so that ends our discussion proper for today's learning session. Again, that was Attorney Isaac Yel Nogra of the Department of the Interior and Local Government Regional Office 7. Thank you so much, ma'am. Of course, again, we would like to thank our participants for actively participating and congratulations again to our Knowledge Check winner. May we confirm po na ano, mula na po tayong additional questions that will be addressed during the open forum. Pwede pa pong humabol. Okay. So at this juncture, please be reminded that questions are filtered as our speaker shall only be answering the questions related to our learning session. Once again, we have our resource speaker, Attorney Isa Fiel Enogra. So I think found only one question because the previous question I already answered regarding the accountant. Uh, tandali, ito. Start na kayo sa pinakamalapit. Ah, should a bidder um, be for complete delivery? Na po naka-flash na. Ah, sorry. Ako, <laughs> chat. I checked the chat box kasi. Okay oh, po, ma'am. Um, yeah. I'll read the question po. Patulong lang po to resolve an issue na bawal daw mag-transact sa LGU kapag meron kapatid or relative na employed sa LGU. Kami sa BAC, ang basihan namin is Section 47, Disclosure of Relations. Tama po ba na hindi ipasali ang interested bidder or supplier to participate in the procurement of the PE because meron siyang kapatid, anak, or relative na nasa LGU pero hindi related within the third civil degree of the hope back members, back set, back TWG, and head of the end user unit as such stated in Section 47, Disclosure of Relations. Meron ba ibang law na basihan sa pagbabawal? Ito ha. ha. RA 9184 mentions only up to third civil degree, but remember RA 67113, your code of conduct mentions up to fourth civil degree. And also RA 9184 mentions only na Hindi ka-relative ng BAC, ng BAC members, BAC Secretary, TWG. But RE 6713 has more stricter requirements. So kung hindi ka man tamaan sa RE 9184, baka pwede kang tamaan sa, sa RE 6713 na Code of Conduct. Pero ang titingnan nandiyan dyan usually is and you service siya. Kasi minsan, uh, ano yung role niya? Baka naman means kung ano lang yung role niya sa LGU, nakaka-influence ba siya? May, uh, may involvement ba siya sa decision making? Baka sobrang malapit siya sa hope, di ba? So yun yung detainants. RE 6713 kasi medyo broader siya yung definition ng, uh, ng conflict of interest. Doon siya. Baka doon siya tamaan. Kasi sa RA 9184, uh, specific tayo hanggang third civil degree at sinong relative, kaninong relative lang. Pero sa RA 6713, Mas malawak, umaabot hanggang fourth civil degree. At yung definition mismo ng conflict of interest could cover a lot more. Hindi siya define because it's open for interpretation. So, yan. Baka doon tatamaan lang. 
Thank you so much, Bob, for our second question. Then another, should a bidder be given sanction for incomplete deliveries of awarded items within delivery period or after considering reasons for undelivered items? Meron naman tayong liquidated damages eh, kung mga delay, delay lang. Uh, it's not, uh, you can consider the liquidated damages a sanction already, right? For incomplete deliveries kasi, kailangan makompleto niya yan because otherwise, di ba, kinumpute na yan ng end user, magkano? Hala. Okay, sorry, naglobat na kasi yung ano ko. So, kinocompute na yun ang end user, magkano ilan yung quantity. So, dapat ma-deliver niya yun. Pag hindi, then it, it means it will cost the procuring entity. Uh, it will, uh, the procuring entity will incur more, uh, more cost or damage. So, it will be charged to him, no, to the bidder. Not only yung liquidated damages, kung kulang pa yung liquidated damages niya based sa performance equity niya, kung ano man yung pwede pang magasto na beyond sa, sa liquidated damages niya, it's a charge sa kanya yun. So, yeah, that's still a sanction. Hindi kasi pwedeng malugi yung gobyerno. <laughs> Hindi pwedeng ma-prejudice ang gobyerno dahil sa kanilang fault. Yun lang. Hmm. Of course, babayaran niya. Items nyo. Yung delivered items, babayaran yan. Pero ang tanong, baka yung bayad sa kanila, mas malaki pa yung utang nila. Kasi malaki yung na-incur na expenses at damage ng LGU. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is our last question. Um, kindly flash po. During the course of project implementation, the contractor have suspended their construction activities due to non-payment of the billing request which have incurred more than 45 calendar days. What are the possible resumption of this suspension since the contract was funded through a loan and requires a 20% retention prior to release? Ang tanong kasi dyan, bakit, sila nag, bakit hindi sila nabayaran, ng billing, nabayaran after sila nag-submit ng billing request? Kasi kung fault nyo, then, iba ang usapan yun. Kung fault niya, kasi, di ba, you're not supposed to pay din kung wala siyang progress. Oh. So, hindi ko ma-determine kung bakit di siya nabayaran. Because sa government, andyan na yung, yung loans kasi, hindi naman ibibigay sa inyo yung pera yan ng banko, no? But it is available for you. It is available anytime na may progress siya, available yun para i-charge yung bayad sa kanya. Bakit hindi siya binabayaran? Baka wala rin siyang progress. No? No? So, I don't know. Resumption of the suspension since the contract was funded through a loan. Kasi ang alam ko, pag andyan na yung ang loan kasi, bini-base yan sa total, uh, sa, uh, minsan lagpas pa nga yan, eh, mas malaki pa yan sa project cost. Kasi iga-grant ng, uh, hindi naman kasi lahat yan gagamitin. But it could be used, di ba? Uh, so, the question here, I don't really think it's the, <laughs> sorry ah, Kasi for pro-government tayo, we presume regularity sa government eh. So, bakit hindi siya nabayaran? Yun lang. And if with the complete facts there, I cannot fully answer ano yung pwedeng gawin niya. Kasi kung mali niya, ay, may liquidated damages sa kanya. Kung mali ng gobyerno, ay pwede tayong demanda ang gobyerno. Remember, the government, the local government units, you, has a corporate personality, you can sue and be sued. Diba? Yung procuring entity, you can be sued local government units. So, if it's an enforceable contract, enforceable contract yan, madidemanda ang buong ang buong LGU. But if it's an enforceable contract, there, there is a problem of the loan because of it. For example, yung sa authority ng mayor to enter into contracts, nagka-problema tayo dyan. Pag unenforceable yan, edi si mayor yung liable. Uh -huh. But if, if I will not know what's the reason why hindi siya nabayaran, mahirap talaga mag magbigay ng definite na answer. Hmm. Okay. Thank you so much po, ma'am. And thank you to everyone who submitted their questions for our speaker. If you have more questions, you may still ask them out by visiting slido.com and all you have to do is just type the event code hashtag government procurement PH which the GPPBTSO will answer through an issuance or through FAQs. At this point, we would like to thank again our resource speaker, Attorney Isaac Fiel Arsenal Nogra, for accepting our invitation and for extensively discussing all the questions raised during our open forum. 
And to our participants who stayed all throughout the course of our program, thank you all very much. And again, thank you for our winners. Congratulations. And please check your emails or chat box as our technical team shall coordinate with you on how you may claim your special token. Now, before we proceed to the final reminders, allow me to provide a brief recap or bird's eye view of today's learning sessions. Today, we had an entire session on protest mechanism and guidelines where we had a comprehensive discussion on the different penal, civil, and administrative provisions, as well as an in-depth discourse of the liabilities under RA number 3019. We also had a profound discussion on the protest mechanism where we highlighted the requisites for filing a request for consider consideration and valid protest. We also had a fruitful discourse on the blacklisting guidelines, where we highlighted the uniform guidelines on blacklisting. Finally, we had a meeting discussion on the blacklisting procedure during the procurement and contract implementation stages. Today's sessions are led by a resource speaker, Attorney Isa Piel A. Arsenal Nogra. Once again, we do hope that you were able to have a deep dive into this learning session on all the learning sessions throughout our five-day learning activity. For the final important reminders, again, we would like to remind the participants to please accomplish the participants' daily attendance by visiting the Google Form link provided by our event secretariat. Rest assured that all the information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. Also, please be advised that the certificate of participation shall only be issued to the participants upon completion of the general evaluation module evaluation, and resource speaker evaluation, which are all accessible via the GPPBTSO ODMS. That is bit.ly slash GPPB dash TSO dash ODMS using the ODMS control number provided by the activity secretariat. As you can see on your screens, once you log in in the GPPBTSO OTMS portal and key in the control number, the Evaluate Training is on the bottom left corner of your page. Once you click Evaluate Training, don't forget to click both the General Evaluation with the blue font, as well as the Resource Speaker Evaluation at the right portion with the I to complete your evaluation requirements. Finally, may we request everyone to please switch on your cameras to commemorate this learning session with our resource speaker, Attorney Aiza. Let us have our group before. We will be having three shots on my count. For the first page on my screen at the count of three, one, two, and three. Okay, for our second page at my count, one, two, and three. And for the last page, at the count of three, one, two, and three. That is it. And that concludes the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on Government Procurement Reform Act or the Republic Act Number no. 9184 and 2016 Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations. On behalf of the GPPBTSO, this has been your facilitator, Krista Kailat Yonko. Thank you all very much. Mask up, stay safe, and see you in our future training activities. Ingat po tayong lahat.